The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, sir. Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. It is Wednesday, June 23rd, 2021. Also known as hashtag PMS 100K giveaway weekday three. Yeah! The last two days have seen us give away $50,000 cash, two 75-inch televisions, which I thought was 70-inch, are actually 75-inch. Wow. You do pay for those extra five inches. <laughs> and a golf cart. Today, we'll be giving away two full sets of clubs. Wow. Yes. Over a $1,000 golf bag. I, 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 we'll be giving away two of those. And another $25,000. Hell yeah. And this is in celebration of everything that has been leading up to this point in which we will be taking off a week for the first time in a long, long, long time. Not happy about it. I want to let everybody know I'm not pumped about it, okay? It wasn't just my decision. It was everybody's decision. You have to think ahead to the future, you know? We just went through an incredibly long football season all the way through an off season that was coming after a uh, quarantine that happened with yeah. no sports. And I really felt an obligation to be the dancing clown on the screen, whether on your phone, on your computer, or we're seeing... Like 35% of the people that watch us watch us on their TV, so shout out to you. Wherever we are, I felt a sense of an obligation to be the idiots who will let you know throughout your day, whatever you're going through, that there are dumber people out there. Mm -hmm. There are people that want you to have a good time. There is a mental vacation to be had on the internet at youtube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee show every single Monday through Friday, noon to 3 30, 4 o'clock ish, and also on Sirius XM Channel 82, Mad Dog Sports Radio. <laughs> But with all these documentaries I watch, mm. okay, alongside my beautiful wife and our entire fur family, I think one of the most important things to do is take care of not only yourself, uh, your, your, your physically and, you know, emotionally and mentally and everything like that, but also everybody's well-being out of the office. You know, ladies, uh, significant others. For me, my wife, like, I think us getting away for a week is going to be great for everybody. Uh, it's going to come back on the other side. We're going to have a great football season. And I had Woo. to get to that point. I had to get to that point. And then once I got to that point, I was like, you know what? It's a celebration, actually. It's almost like a season is ending. Another season's coming on the other yeah. side of that. Now, the next season of this show will not officially begin until... Thursday night kickoff, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, yep. Dallas Cowboys. September. Okay, so that is when the next season will begin. But you get it. This is almost like a uh, a bye to last year, a hello to this upcoming year. It's a celebration, so we're giving away at least $100,000 this week. Uh, this will be $75,000 given away after today. Two more sets of golf clubs. Tomorrow's giveaway. Oh, it's oh, big. Oh, man, you have no idea. Uh, we have been thinking about it for what? We think about it for long time. Long time. Yeah, at least two uh, Month. Today's giveaway, hashtag PMS 100K giveaway weekday three. Yeah. Okay. Will be a putt that I attempted earlier today. I think we have a photo. Zito, can you get that photo? Pull that up on the screen. I attempted a 45 foot putt earlier in the middle of our office. You'll be. Nah, I'm not going to give away any tips. No, okay? no, no, no. I'm not going to give away any tips. But just know that all you have to do is utilize the hashtag PMS 100K giveaway weekday three. Mm. And guess how many attempts it took for me to putt from that spot right there into a hole that is underneath the basketball hoop in between the rock stone cold Steve Austin and the fan duel pillars 45 feet away. And you might think to yourself, you know what, Pat, you're, you're, you're going to win $20 million in the next 31 years yeah. uh, via golf and everything like that. You're probably pretty good at putting. Maybe that's what you're thinking. <laughs> Maybe you're also thinking, 
I almost quit four or five different times in this. Oh. So take that into account whenever you're making your guests on Twitter. We'll give away $25,000 in two sets of clubs. We can't thank you all enough for rocking with us. Now, at Ty Schmidt is off and running. He has a massive weekend. Yeah, coming. Yeah, go, uh, but, uh, we're celebrating on, that as well, obviously. Woo. That is something that uh, we can't wait for. So he is, you know, he's out there doing it right now. He oh, yeah. hopped on a bird this morning. He's flying into a town that he will not leave until he is a married man. I can't, I can't wait to see it happen. I can't wait to celebrate. Uh, congrats to him. But sitting in lieu of him, the Hammer Down boys have joined us for hour one at Tone Diggs, at Bubba Gumpino, at Boston Connors in the VIP lounge, the boys behind the glass. We appreciate that. At Tone Diggs, Hammer Down, okay, lost. Me, $14,000, yeah. the show, another $10,000. And you guys, by the way, incredible job. We didn't show that on the picture. We should have. Looks beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. The office looks amazing. Great job. You guys have done so, so well with the place. Uh, but gambling-wise, since the England-Scotland thing, have you guys been back on track? And did you guys know that the Suns, without Chris Paul, were going to be able to get a nice 2-0 head start on the Clippers Without Kawhi Leonard, uh, Paul George's been balling. Obviously, Devin Booker's been balling. An alley-oop to win that thing on an inbound pass in under a second. People have been talking about that since we were in, like, grade school basketball. <laughs> well, like, you could throw and then just tip it in the air, and then it kind of grows, and then it goes into the... You never think you're going to be able to accomplish that. You never think you're going to be... That isn't the play, yeah. by the way. That is not the picture of the play. <laughs> There's no way it is because... Yeah, 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 because his hand was right on top of the thing or whatever, but... It was unbelievable that they got that win. Chris Paul now potentially beats COVID, comes out. That team gets even better. They're going to win this whole thing yep. maybe at this point. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Milwaukee's a great city. Yes, great Milwaukee city. might have that beautiful. entire thing popping off. Beautiful. Atlanta's beautiful. But did you guys know that, or is that not what you bet on? Do you, you don't bet on the NBA? Do you stay away from that? I did a little bit. I did take the DeAndre Ayton double-double and a Suns win boost last night. That hit. Wow. Uh, How many points did he score? 22, I believe. Oh, so it wasn't like he scored eight, and then that was... No, no, no. <laughs> oh, that was... That would have been, been that would have <laughs> been awesome. No, that there's no one of the Clippers who can defend him. So he's he's been been pretty solid all series. Uh, we've been pretty good. Uh, last night was a tough night. Went seven and one. Um, oh, oh, so oh. you wanted an re immediate reaction there? I think a little early. You're not in the show this early. I, we are not. <laughs> Here's we are not why I was all tough jacked up <laughs> just yet. We're kind of rolling into it. I want to let you know. You go seven and one, pal, on just a random fucking Tuesday on hashtag PMS 100K giveaway weekday two. Yeah. You go seven and one in the middle of sports that nobody cares about. We need to celebrate that, Tom. Oh, Tony. Tony. Hey, Here's now that one would have been the one that we all would have made money off of uh -huh. and we all would have bet massively on. But the seven wins is unbelievable. This is not normal. We should be very thankful for the hammer down. Yeah, here's why it was tough. I did have a, an eight leg parlay, $25 to win 5K. Um, the one that lost the starting pitcher, Marcus Stroman, he's really good for the Mets. He pitched 11 pitches and then left the game. So, because he had shit, did he get? Did he? Have no, 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 no. He's hey, there. that's yeah. a big story right now in baseball. Thanks for leading into that. And Gumpy, yep. how'd you do last night? Eight and two yesterday. So, so, hey, this is real. I know AJ was trying to talk you guys out of hosting yeah, this he show. Was. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people, like, imagine if you were the gambler you were and Gumpy stunk. And Gumpy, on oh, the flip yeah, side, imagine if you were really good and Diggs stunk. Like, that would stink for the person it that's would. bad. Yeah. You two, I, I think you have to be the most consistent duo in the world right now with winning and winning and winning. It, you guys have to feel alive whenever you're looking through these numbers and when you're looking through the sports FanDuel Sportsbook app. Somebody just dropped. What some, was that? Drop some rebar. What the hell's going on? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Mick cleaning back uh, there? Oh, it's out. That sounded very clear yeah, that way. That I mean, way. everybody looked one direction. <laughs> I will investigate. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Zito. Zito. But it's nice because, like, yesterday, no, two days ago, I went 0 1 and 1, but Gumpy went like 4 and 1 in it baseball. Is. And then they're welding. Whatever. They're welding again. So, yeah, yeah. I think they were. What the hell is pick each other up. Yeah. They pick and, each other up a lot of times. And whenever you're out there, at, at what point during a winning streak do you, do you like, do you guys feel pressure right now? Because you guys have set a standard now where. If you have a couple bad nights, you yeah. know, people are going to be like, these guys stink. These are just everybody else all of a sudden. Bars up here, There's boys. a lot of losers 
okay, being handed out by people. All right, and those people, incredibly entertaining people, very intelligent people, very knowledgeable people, sports gambling and spreads and everything like that have been around forever. A lot of losers, a lot of people selling their picks, a lot of losers in those picks. There's winners, obviously, somewhere. I don't think anybody is as hot as you two have been, no which leads Foxy and I to a conversation on a weekly basis oh, yeah. that you guys have to just be lying to us. You've been oh, adding nah. Foxy in all your bets. Foxy, is this legit? Have you been keeping up with this? From what I've seen, that Tony's picks are correct and he's not lying and also there's no one from hammered down watching saying hey you guys check these guys all right they're definitely lying about all their records so it must be true that is true if you guys were out here saying you were winning when you were actually losing the internet has a yeah. way with yeah. dealing yeah. with that they would sort tell of you thing. real quick Very HDBs. Quickly. but i feel like the hdbs and i feel like more people and this is me included and i try my best i you guys are a fucking ATM right now. Yeah. And this is a great time to just be getting money, by the way. The, the world's about to open back up. Tickets, I mean, mm. life, restaurants, movie theaters, I heard uh -oh. are coming back Come on. in a big, big way. I mean, this is a good time just to have a handout. Now, not everybody can do this. No, it's not national. We no. apologize. Louisiana, Louisiana just got okay, though. Congrats, now Louisiana. Shout out, Canada. Shout out Canada. Shout out to Canada. They got it as well? Uh, single game betting, I believe, was legalized yesterday. Okay, congrats to Canada. <laughs> Here we go. Let's hope, uh, looks like Fandle has a plug up there. You know what I mean? Let's get some maple in the in the in the veins up there. Let's go ahead and do this thing. We love Canada. Love it. The uh, best. There, there was another state. I forget what it was. They actually said how many online distributors they were going to give out skins. They call them. They they. I think it was like twenty or thirty, maybe. It was the last one that came online. Before. Yeah, thirteen. I forget. Is that what, Ohio? Uh, no, no. no. Yeah, maybe. It might have. It might I have thought been they had a, a bunch of skins available. But there's it. a lot more information being released with each state that's opening up now. Back in the day, back in the day, like a year ago when a state would come online, it was like, okay, they got it, and now it's going to be a process on who's going to get in. I feel like now that the blueprint has kind of been laid by now seven states, eight states at this point, with all access, basically, the amount of money that's been made, the way people can... You know, profit off of this that are in polit political positions. Right? Yes. If you get this, it's probably going to make everybody happy. By the way, there's no political ties to sports gambling. And also, there are people that abuse it. We got to look out for those people in our community. But there is an overwhelmingly amount of humans that just enjoy it. It makes the game just better. Five bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 14,000 bucks on an England team. <laughs> But anyways, it makes everything better. It makes relationships better, by the mm -hmm. way. My wife, she loves the Indianapolis Colts. Mm -hmm. She likes the, uh, she loves IndyCar. She likes some other things. But to watch other games that aren't Colts or any other sports that I watch, just basketball, the Pacers aren't good, so it's tough for her to get into it. But if there's a game live, she's at the casino in her hand. I yeah. mean, it is. Congrats to Louisiana. Let's go. Come on. Um, Connor, how you doing, dude? I'm doing pretty good. You know, while you were just listing off all that stuff, the same thing goes for, you know, marijuana. Legalizing that would make all these things better and more money like, for people. No political affiliations no poli to dope. <laughs> yes. Okay, listen. We got a guy down right now. Locked down. Mm. Probably in solitary confinement because his particular face and head is recognizable. <laughs> and whenever you go into a jail and you're recognizable, I'm, I'm speaking... From a place of experience here, they will put you into solitary confinement because you immediately become a special inmate. Mm -hmm. I was put in a glass cage of emotions <laughs> whenever I was picked up walking through a parking lot at about 4 a.m. with no shirt on. Now, they have their story on why I was there. I have mine. Whatever the case, it was public intoxication. I was shackled. Okay, oh. I'm from Pittsburgh. We've talked about the South Side a lot. Yep. I didn't think I was anywhere near where I could have potentially been a couple of times, maybe in college on the South Side, and maybe a horse cop down there just told me to get the fuck off the edge. <laughs> you need to get your ass home, dude. Hey, I'm going down <laughs> in Indy. I guess you know, shirtless, 4 a.m. walking through the streets. Somebody calls. You're you're gonna get arrested. What? By the way. I appreciate that right move, okay? Helped me out a lot immensely in life. I mean, driving me home maybe would have scared me too into potential yeah. new life. But anyways, the whole experience I had now gets me a chance to relate to what happened to our guy down in Texas. He was sitting in a glass cage in there looking at the doctor's office, okay? Had to go and do his mugshot, had to have his little court 
uh, appearance in oh, the jail mm -hmm. to set the whole thing up, and then he's going to get released under two ounces, uh, or under I, I was saying by the way, under a gram of weed found on Mr. Caruso, who's oh, traveling geez. through the airport in absolute worst case scenario nightmare when traveling commercially or or privately, obviously, but, but with nightmare <laughs> whenever you travel commercially, okay is that you accidentally didn't check some zippered pocket in a bag that you were carrying and you might have left, I don't know, maybe like, uh, maybe a, a little bit of a, a, a pre-smoked already, half-smoked little uh, cone that just fell down into the crack into the bottom. Yeah. So it, immediately while you're going through or up the escalators to go into the Indianapolis airport, for me, the one that I'm flying out, there is always a, oh shit, where did I have you last? You were at, oh yeah, you were in Mexico. There could okay. be weed in here. Okay, <laughs> so you got to do a, yeah. you go right over to a garbage can. Okay, you go right to a garbage can. This happens, I, I would assume that you have seen somebody do this mm -hmm. almost every flight where there is a last second, oh, keys, cell phone, wallet. Is there weed in this yeah, bag? Because it's about to go through TSA here. So you do a full thing. He, I would assume, had this grinder in a pocket that might not have been easily visible to remind him that it was in there. And the fact that he gets arrested for a grinder in Texas for a plant that makes you feel better is a problem, obviously. Yeah. But for our guy Caruso, I, there was an overwhelming amount of support for him on the internet. Yeah, thank God. Hey, hashtag free roost. Free roost. Free roost. Dude. Free roost dude. Hey, Braun helped him out. He said, hey. He tweeted out the gif of uh, straight cash, homie. So I assume LBJ went down there, you know, paid whoever he Yeah, needed but all to. you need is one asshole judge, right? That's yeah. all you need mm -hmm. is one. Hey, you need one judge. Prop no, I'm not going to point and, and judge anybody because I assume there's a lot, of, a lot of incredible people that would not have done. For instance, when I got arrested for my public intoxication, every other officer of the law that I ran into that worked in the department that this dude worked at and in the department in Ohio that had me pulled over on the side <laughs> of the street told me that they would have never arrested me for a public intoxication you ran into the wrong cop in this particular moment which by the way i think we're all learning that there are a couple of those mm -hmm. that we would like to eliminate but reality tells us that there's probably always going to be fucking assholes it's not cool and I, I don't think the the potential good people in that world love them either but we got to figure that one out because they have a lot of power but whenever you talk about going into one particular tsa agent or a campus police officer who who by the way very easily could have just went hey you know what yeah. That's for tobacco? Yeah. All right. Hey, Carry on. Good luck. Yeah. Just Carry dump on. it out. Uh -huh. You know, whatever fire Caruso probably had, by the way, place for the Lakers, let's oh, assume yeah. <laughs> whatever he had <laughs> in there heat. was unbelievable. That uh -huh. would have been a slap right into Caruso's mouth anyways, probably dumping out 50 bucks maybe in there, right into it, into a trash right in front of him. Or do what the guys at a stadium that Foxy and I went oh, to. Yeah. They just they shook us down. They were security. They saw our vapes. They acted like we couldn't get in there with them. We are like, no, we can't. It's just tobacco. They're like, no, no, it's not. And they wouldn't let us go. They had little bit of power they just confiscated our vapes yeah. took them put them in their pockets thank and you just kept moving i wouldn't be surprised if they did this with uh caruso's <laughs> dope hey he's got that cali bud for sure doesn't yeah, he wow. yeah motherfuckers yeah, from, yeah let's there. go ahead and get it. lock him down <laughs> yeah. and by the way that grinder is probably sharp too i want to keep that uh, it's a shame i wonder if he's out yet i assume he's not even out yet yeah it's tsa agent like Come I don't on. know if he's out. Do you got to go? You got to get. Well, you got to do your whole thing. Yeah. And what are the laws like in Texas? Are they are they harsh on the I marijuana assume, possession? Or? I don't know because Texas seems like it's kind of opening up, right? Yeah, Elon's 50, bringing 50. in spaceships yeah. in there. Uh, Rogan's bringing his entire comedy it's scene. Not in. For New the Powell devil. out it's not for the devil's lettuce. <laughs> hey. Listen, you can have your guns. You can do a lot of things. Not the devil's lettuce, my friend. <laughs> I can Trust see me. That. Trust me. Where Someone who knows. Yeah, yeah. You lock it down, cowboy. <laughs> yeah, huh? yeah. Mm -hmm. Where's uh, who was it? Nancy Reagan, right? The nope to dope thing. Uh, Where please. are they from? California. The Reagan's. Yeah, the Reagans are from California, I think, because I think old Ronald was not only a punter and kicker oh, yeah. and football player, he was also an actor. Superstar, yeah. yeah. He was a superstar that got into the biz, shook some hands, and they said nope to dope. They went to war on this entire thing. I'd assume the Reagans have a lot of friends that are still in power down there in Texas that are potentially arresting somebody for a grinder in their bag yeah, going on. through the airport. I figure Georgie Bush would just say, hey, don't you worry about it. Uh, Zito pulled up the Texas weed law. Cannabis in Texas is illegal for recreational use. Possession of up to two ounces is a class B misdemeanor punishable by up to 180 days in prison and fine up to $2,000 and the suspension of one's driver's list. Yeah. This, so he's standing in like a, uh, 
today at some point he might be out i don't know you get a mug shot Hopefully. you get processed then you got to go stand in front of like a, a judge that's telling you what you're going to be charged and uh, you know it's a whole you're standing it's a much smaller court right it's tiny it's in the jail or whatever you're standing and uh the judge told me that it was whatever I did was punishable for like 90 days in jail. I was like, not, I actually said 90 <laughs> days in jail and, uh, and something else. And I was like, yeah. And they were like, uh, the, the lawyer guy that represented Mike Tyson Ooh. and many others in this city, pretty high up. The guy that uh, I seen at um, my rookie minicamp a week after I got drafted, he, he came and spoke to the team and said, if we ever see each other again, it's not good. Oh. And he was right because the next time I had seen him, it was a judge telling me I could go to jail for three months. I go, what? <laughs> and then something else, I'm, where, where are we? What are we doing? And him, I'm going to get you out of this, but I'm like, get me out of what? <laughs> get me out of what? I was, and they're like, yeah, sir, just sit down. And so I sit down, they do the whole thing, and then I was out on my way or whatever but that's what caruso has got to go through today and they're going to say punishable by 180 days in jail maximum and caruso is going to go what is going on down here you were on your way too but little did you know that you know the the people in the front of the uh police station were giving tips to the press hey he's sneaking out the back door See, go get him go get him I, I thought that was my lawyer potentially oh no yeah, yeah i thought it was ah nah i don't know because his, pub, good his pub face for him. Yeah, yeah 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 because he yeah. he's a very nice guy and i've talked to him since and he's obviously pretty powerful guy around Indianapolis, of course, because of his whole thing. But he said, as I was walking out, he's like, I'll drive you over to uh, the Colts facility or whatever. I was like, cool, cool, because I didn't have my car. Obviously, it was still in Broad Ripple. Well, I chose not to drive smart, it, by smart. the way. Hey, how about that? Thank you, Pat. They don't talk, they don't talk about, about that. Yeah. Yeah. Smart. I wasn't a bit, uh, listen, I, there was an era there where everybody seemed to be drunk driving, and that's why, you know, Uber and everything saved. That was never my, I was never my forte. Mm -hmm. uh, that, I, I always thought that was pretty scary. I had a couple friends that, mm -hmm. you know, potentially oh, yeah. made some poor decisions while drunk driving, ended up losing their lives, the whole thing like that. So that scared the shit out of me, but I didn't do that. So he, t he said, I'll take you uh, back to the Colts facility or whatever. I was like, thank you. And I go to follow him. He goes, no, you got to get your stuff or whatever still. And that's when I found out some money was missing that I definitely oh, had. Huh. And then um, and then he goes, I'll meet you out the back, though. And I, th I think as soon as he turned that corner, he told the media, he was like, yeah, we're going out the back or whatever. Mm. And they just sprinted out around there. Or maybe they saw him and they're like, oh, going out the back door with this guy. They sprinted around. But you, they came running around the corner with me popping out of that jail. And uh, I like looked to my, the car was right in front of me. I looked to my left and I see him or whatever. I'm like, all right, hood up. Here we go. I've, I've seen this on the internet before. <laughs> yeah. Let's go hood up real quick. And somebody classic, like, did you, did you bobble the snap on this one, Pat? And I was almost like, well, you motherfucker. <laughs> You could have came up with something better. Yeah. I, 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 I heard from my mom. I heard from my, I'm sorry, I heard from my dad that this was reported on TMZ like five, six hours ago. You guys have been waiting for this moment. Did you bobble the snap on this one? It's like, don't question my hands, okay? Yeah. Question my judgment. All right, mm -hmm. question, question for sure, but let's not question my hands here. Kicked it out of bounds, uh, maybe. Maybe, like, yeah, shank, did you shank it, maybe. Yeah. I, but, hey, don't question these hands. <laughs> the ball. Please, okay. all right? I, I'm already fighting against enough right now. Don't question goddamn hands. It was, uh, but that's what Caruso's going through right now. I assume he's sitting in there, and he knows how everybody is reacting to this outside. There's been a couple times where I thought I was potentially going to go down because uh, there was something in my pocket that I had a uh, similar vein yeah, yeah. that I had, cause you know, whenever we smoke around here, we go to Denver, we go to, of course. we go to Michigan, yeah, we go to yeah. Illinois, Mass. we go over to Ohio, we'll be at Mass. Yeah, so it's like, and in Florida it's legal. So it's like, we only do this particular stuff whenever we're not in right. states. Whereas, but every once in a while, you'll accidentally just walk down the street in a state that you don't, and you're like, oh, do I smell like dope right now? I got to, Wrong oh, that's state. a fool. Oh shit. Here you go, officer. <laughs> I had it. Sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, shout out to Caruso. Hopefully he'll be okay. AJ Green and uh, DeAndre Hopkins are talking about their relationship. Uh, did you? Is he on? He is? My guy. Let's get right to it. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us right now. Um, Zito, you could just tell me that, by the way. Oh, yeah. By the way, that's on me. <laughs> Zito is in my ear all the time. And then we got a guy joining us for the first time ever, just yeah. sitting there. And Zito gave me the, hey, do you want to? And I was like, is he? Yeah, yeah, okay, my guy. Me, <laughs> the, we should release, is there a way to release me, the Zito? The and audio I, between yeah, you two? Zito, yeah, I want to listen to I, it. I wonder if that is ever possible. <laughs> nah, he's a, nah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's a fantastic <laughs> thing. I appreciate you, Zito. Joining us right now, it's not in a sports vein, by the way. This is a guy who has... 
He's affected our life now more than I could have ever imagined. I got a chance to witness this guy start at West Virginia University as a rapper named D.Y. He then moved, I think, to L.A. I'll let him tell his story to commit to music fully. I followed along his entire uh, kind of voyage through this thing. And I think he has now at this point hit his full stride. We use his music in damn near every vlog we do because it's an absolute heater. And I think he's independent. Ladies and gentlemen, David Moore. Yeah! Hey, what up? Hey, hold on. Fellas, how are y'all? Hey, David, great. Thank you for joining us. Uh, just so the people at home or watching can know who you are, I just want to play a little snippet here. He's the guy that cre right. he's the guy that created this song right here. Coming live from the heartland, USA. Your dreams go to die and your friends get sent away. Working to survive nine to five every day. Spend your paycheck up at Walmart and Chick fil A. Pull up in the Honda, baby, when got the top down. Parking lot. Anyways, that's Dan. What a fucking hey. banger. Hey, that's huge. That song is massive. Yeah. As soon as you made Thank it. Thank you, brother. As soon as you made it, you were like, hey, I got, I, there, I got one here, I think. Is that is that the thought immediately? Well, that song started out. I knew it was special. I heard the beat and I was like, oh my God, there's, there's something about this. And uh, it took me a minute to write. I'm not going to lie. It took me months to write that song because I wanted to make sure that I was providing the vibes, but also have a, have a, a relatable message, you know, for everybody out there in, uh, in, in the heartland in middle America in this part and that part all over the country and it's been the reception's been amazing well yeah, there's good reason i mean anytime you can get chick-fil-a on a beat drop yeah. i mean yeah that is hey, good. that is gonna hey. go you know sometimes it's the, it's the simplest things that that are the most relatable right well, i think chick-fil-a is the most relatable <laughs> especially for the crowd that you're but your flow is insane too and, and i think that's something that there's a lot of people that rap Okay, there's a lot of people that attempt uh, to put sounds together and make it sound good. And there's a lot of really good music out there. But the way you tell stories and your flow and your, your beat selection, I don't know how you go through that whole thing. It's fucking awesome. And there's no way in hell anybody at Lazy Lizard or Elements or Chasers or Club Z, these are all clubs in Morgantown, West Virginia, by the way, that, yeah. that DY uh, performed at back then. Did You just fell in love with this in high school, college, and you're just never going to give up? Like, what was the, the story here? Dude, Borman South, freshman year, WVU, Morgantown, baby, uh, <laughs> fell in love with music and was just like, hey, there's really no plan B for me. I'm going to I'm gonna make music. I'm going <clears> to <throat> pursue this to the fullest extent. You know, I went to graduate from WVU got a degree, did all that, but kind of knew the whole time, like, hey, this is what I'm going to do. Um, was releasing music as DY, and around 2014, I realized, like, man, something's missing. I'm not as creatively fulfilled as I need to be, as I want to be. And I just took about a year and a half just to hold myself in the studio, and I was just like, hey, I'm going to be me, release music as David Morris, and I'm going uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to talk about you know, my roots and where I'm from, you know, I grew up in Charleston, West Virginia. So Morgantown was obviously a natural progression. And yeah, I just realized, hey, I need to get back to back to my roots and need to need to represent for for people who grew up in, in small towns and who who understand a place like Charleston and Morgantown. And the reception has just been amazing ever since. And uh, here I am on the Pat McAfee show, holding it down. Hey, and by the way, Ooh. hysterical to think about as we are you know, if if we if we were to venture back to us two <laughs> roaming around Morgantown, oh my God, and say, hey, listen, in 2021, all right, you're going to be just David Morse. You're just going to be fucking stupid ass Pat Mac. Still, you're going to be stupid ass Pat McAfee, <laughs> and you guys are going to get a chance to chat about the growth. I am so incredibly proud of you, dude. Yeah, man, thank you, Woo! thank you, my brother. No thank problem. Hey, if, if somebody told you back then when you were just destroying the football, you know, through the goalposts, if somebody just said, hey, 2021 you're gonna just get paid a lot of money to just talk crazy shit with your friends on the internet about sports football wrestling whatever would you have believed them no no i would not it would have been awesome I'd be, hey fucking hey sure. hey let's do it but <laughs> i think do it. hey i think now and this is interesting because you're same age as i am but 
live from the heartland USA smashed on TikTok, right? TikTok is just a, a whole different animal and, you know, Twitter and the invention of, and I'm going to sound like a 90 year old man, but the invention of being able to go live on your phone, okay? And being able to do something in public with everybody having a 4K camera now. And back in the day, it was just a, a shitty camera or whatever, but that wasn't like that back in the day. But I think if it was, everybody says, obviously the parties aren't as the same or whatever. I I think we would have had a pretty creative place in Morgantown, West Virginia, if we were able to make content through those college years. I mean, it would have been it would have been wild out there. <laughs> it would have been much different. Um, I mean, listen, West Virginia University has had a reputation for for decades for being just one of the, if not the craziest party school, especially back in our day <laughs> there. You know, there were couches burned in the streets. That still happens. They flipped a car over and set it on fire outside of my house on 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 Grant. I Bag mean, dead, it's dude. been wild, Damn. and I, I feel like we would have been at the forefront of utilizing whatever social media we could to let people know that West Virginia goes the hardest. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's a it's a different day and age, man. It's a, it's pretty wild um, to to think about how far we've all come. David, uh, you were rocking parties back then. And the parties that you just talked about, it's hard to, and I feel like an asshole because I get invited to, I used to at least, nowadays I don't drink that much anymore because, I mean, I took many years off my life in Morgantown <laughs> and that is not like an exaggeration. I'm, I'm talking like every night, it was, there was penny pitchers on Wednesday, drink till you drowned on Thursday. I mean, just like everything was under five bucks, come just get after it, whatever you got. And I did, and I got loans out to do it. I had a good time with that. And, whole and you woke up and went to football practice <laughs> and, and work went to every game. Yeah, and workouts. All the time. Yeah, I don't know how all, I, I, I tried to a couple times with uh, like you college kids, you know, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go fucking puke. All right, I'm going to go work out with Mike Barwis, who's a madman, at 6.30 a.m. Let's have a good time. Let's run this back tonight, though. Let's figure out how we do that. You got it. It was such a good time. Um, but yeah. whenever you whenever you think back to that D.Y. guy you were rapping, right, doing what you were trying to yep. do, into becoming David Morse, did you do DMT? Did you do any of the sweet? Did you have any of those moments? Did you do any of those? I, I, you know what, man? I'm actually – um, I'm not a crazy – I'm not a, a partier type of guy, man. It really just took some soul search, and I just realized I was like, "Hey, I'm making music. Something's missing. Let me fall back. Let me just there's a see. There's a difference, guys. Let me let me make it very clear for everybody out there. There's a difference between falling off and falling back. Right? Falling, off the wow. falling off, falling off. The people decide. Falling back, you decide. And so it was just a it was a very conscious effort to say, "Hey, you know what? I'm gonna take a year, year and a half. I'm not gonna release any music, and I'm just gonna go in the studio." every day and almost train in a sense i'm just gonna write songs make music and there was actually a time where i was like hey i'm never gonna rap again i'm just gonna sing write songs uh i was uninspired and so i took the time off i fell back and i said hey i'm ready to rebrand david morris i have stuff to say now um and uh it was it was a it wasn't any it wasn't any there wasn't a crazy like epiphany one day it was just kind of a gradual growth into it you know and i think that as as artists as as uh, sports broadcasters, as athletes, whatever it is, we all grow, you know. So Pat McAfee, the athlete, is now Pat McAfee, the sports broadcaster, the same person at heart, but just see, a little more evolved. See, you're a, you're a deep ass thinker, though. Mm -hmm. So that that's immediately because like a lot of your lyrics, and you said live from the heartland took you a couple months. So I assume yeah. that was a real, you know, like you were diving in that mentally, but you're an incredibly yeah. deep thinker. I just assumed you're on all the drugs. I did. Just, just, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Most musicians, right? Most people that are prophetic in most people that, you know, talk in, in beautiful fashion and make people go like, oh shit, or like do something like that. I think mean, history has told us normally there's a lot of, <clears throat> There's a lot of drugs being involved yeah, there oh yeah. to tap into parts of there the is. brain that you couldn't go. For you, I guess the fall back was the entire mission. We're talking to David Morris. Hey, we need some songs, dude, over here. I, you know what, man? I was thinking the same thing, and I, uh, I think, I think we need to make something happen, man. I think we need to start cooking up for for Pat McAfee and, and the brand. Yes, the there guys. we go. Yes. See, that's why what? I wanted to have you on today. I wanted to, you know, I feel like people should know this. <laughs> David Morris is about to do no drugs, but he's about to go into a studio and he's about to make us some songs, whether it's, uh, by the way, can't thank you enough. We'll make this announcement. If I am, and we have to prepare for if I am, if I am live with the WWE, whenever we go back to arenas. Okay. So before you go live on Fox, commentators get announced in arena 
to go to the table, oh. right? So I'm going to need some sort of song. I have no idea what Michael Cole's coming out, but I'm going to need some sort of song. I think old David Morris is going to go put the cap on, get the pencil out, and try to get to the notepad wow. and try to make something. Is that, are you going to try to do that? I, I'm going to try to do it. My goal is I want your entrance to be more iconic than everyone else in that arena that night. No, 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 we can't do that. All right, not yet. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we can't do that yet. Okay, that's not what we, we at this moment. Okay, we'll add the lights to, it has to have the okay, ability okay. to be, uh, you know, to evolve and to grow. Right now, we just, because I think, and I'm commentator, right? Commentator. Who knows if I ever get Commentator, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, commentator. And I don't know how... But I know everything you do, you do big. Yeah, I know. Okay. No, imagine <laughs> imagine me this going... This is to... the baddest man in broadcast. <laughs> yeah, gentlemen. The yeah. baddest man in broadcast. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. But imagine me going to Vince McMahon and be like, all right, this is what I'm thinking. All right? <laughs> this is the song. All right? I, I see that pyro you guys said. I'm going to need a couple yeah, of those. A lot of flames. <laughs> I'm going to need a laser. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to need a laser. Yeah. Listen to that beat, too. Laser, laser. You mm -hmm. hear that? That's what I'm thinking. I think it would be beautiful. Fireworks. Get the I'm the fuck out of my fire. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, I appreciate you, David Morris. Good luck with everything. You, sir. you got a new song coming out? Uh, I have a so I just dropped a song called Beat Up Car Heart, and the music video is coming out, and uh, maybe I'll send it to you guys for a little sneak peek. Hold on. Do you have Beat Up Car Heart here? I do. Yeah, it's, it's out. It's on uh, you know YouTube, uh, Spotify, Apple. And uh, the music video is getting ready to drop in about a, a week and a half. Let's go. Hey, you got a lot of love songs in here. Are you okay? Everything all right? I mean, you're pissed off at a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of situations. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you, there's, there's a nice blend, man. We have songs like Small Town Queen, Who Hurt You, Does He Know About Us. Those are songs for ladies. We have songs like uh, uh, Wasteland Dreams, Last Goodbye, um, that are more of the, you know, the the heartbreak songs. We, we got it all, man. I try to, try to just let people... Um, pick and choose what vibe they're in. You yeah, know? you do every genre. You actually say that, oh, it's Wavy Davey, and you do a full, I do, you really do, because DY was party rap, okay? It was like a uh, like party rap. It was a, it's gonna go a college on. rap, yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah, it was college was rap. And then you got into that macchiato, and then you started flowing into, then I started seeing you do some country music, Ooh. then there was like some pop, then there was like, every, you really like, and then now your ver your music is basically everything all into one. It's really fucking cool. You've done great a job. You've done a great Thank job. Thank you, my brother. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, on to that point, David. What is the hardest song to make? Is the, are the love songs kind of tough, or is it more of like the party music that takes like a month, like you said, with Live from the Heartland? You know, with with some like Live from the Heartland, that it is like a party, a fun song. My goal is to try it and and still have a message, a concept, and, and, and I'm saying something, right? It's very easy. It's very easy to just make a song or just, you know, get in the studio and record. So the goal is always to try to make something that, that is memorable, that's quotable. And so a song like Life from the Heartland took me a little longer because even though it was fun and upbeat and catchy, I wanted to make sure there were, there were some lyrics in there that people could relate to. So I say a song like that when I'm, when I'm actually rapping, when I go into rap, I want there to be no fillers. And uh, typically the rap stuff takes me just a little bit longer to lock down. Well, you write it down? Uh, always write it down, yeah. I'm not one of those guys. Uh, it's too thought out. It needs to be, you know, any time I come back to it, I'll start jotting down. And once I hit a block, I'll be like, all right, I'm going I'm to shelve this for a day or two and I'll come back to it fresh. You need to get some of that Caruso weed whenever you uh -huh. <laughs> I'm on that Caruso, you know what I mean? Stanky whenever you purple. Yeah, stanky Cali, bud. Um, yeah, man, he uh, he uh, he had a rough rough night. Yeah, but a legend was born, even mm -hmm. more so, I think. Yeah. You make bangers, man. Yeah. You really do. Girl, you don't need no passport. Get your feet up off my dashboard. Let's go. Wearing a beat up car, heart screaming all right. I'm on track right now. Oh, man. Yes. You're so good. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm going to send you guys the video of that early to take a sneak peek at. I don't. I mean, we got idiots in here. They, yeah, they, you, they, they, you don't. I mean, that <laughs> is probably right. not. I mean, we'd like to see. All right, well, listen. Then, Pat, I will send you a private link. <laughs> okay, smart. Yeah, smart. Yeah. 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 People smart. you trust. That's a smart move. <laughs> Are you independent? Are you with a label? Were you ever with a label? How'd that go? Now, independent, man, and what's great about it is now I have, I have a great team. I have a management team, and I have a team of producers and, and videographers and stuff. And the goal is to, you know, I feel like the biggest asset for an artist is his or her independence. And, I, you know, I understand that's kind of how you guys operate over there. You have great sponsors and great partners to work with. But 
um, that's really where it is now, man. And, you know, um, maybe someday the label thing works out and comes along, but I'm thinking long term. I'm thinking generational. I'm thinking I want to pass my music down, you know, someday when I have kids and and make sure that, uh, you know, I'm able to just be free and creative, man. I'm kind of like you. I, I do what I want when I want. And it's a beautiful thing. And I I can't really have anyone telling me what to do right now. So um, independent, uh, at, at least for the moment. And it's, it's a beautiful thing having people like you support me. I couldn't even imagine. We're lucky to, dude. You you give us bangers to use in our videos. So we appreciate you. And you don't give us copyright Always. strikes and try to take Always. down our business, which I appreciate <laughs> you. But in yours, like for me. If somebody tells me what to do and I respect them, I'm like, okay, I feel like this person has done something that they should be telling me what to do. I'm cool with it. But if it's somebody that I have no respect for and I've seen the decisions that this person has made and how it has worked out and who they thought was good for a long time and they're telling me to do something, which has happened through my broadcasting career, it is really hard not to just be like, hey, go fuck yourself. I do. <laughs> I actually do. But I have no idea how you would be able to do that in the music business. Like in the music business, that's the story of everything is they hold on to songs, they hold on right. records, they keep your albums, they only let you do whatever they, they want you to do. You make no money off it. You don't own it. It feels like, it feels like the independence right way to go, especially if you can make bangers. And I, that's you have proven you can do that, right? I mean, yeah, absolutely. And the thing about it is now is the music industry is so um, it's changing, and it's so open for anyone to be able to every sell business, their music every music. business, every business is changing. Yeah, <clears throat> exactly. And it's a beautiful thing. So, yeah, you know, like I said, I have a great team. I have a great management team, and I have a great uh, a team of just friends who I trust that are creatives. And so, I kind of try to make it so that you know, by the time the world hears a song, <clears throat> I've I, it's gone through a nice run of of, of changes and of, of oh, adjustments okay. to make sure that it's as best as it can be. You know, I just keep those those people that I opinions I value. I keep them very close to me, and then everybody else, like you said, it's just like a. Yeah, I appreciate the feedback, and I, you kind of keep it moving. How you doing? Keep it moving, ladies yep. and gentlemen. Future Grammy winner, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, Whoa. David Morris. Yeah. Okay. yeah, 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 you did good. Whoa, he said, "Okay, uh, good guy, dude." He's always been like same guy though, you know. Well, and he would do stuff at like parties, right? Like yeah, people, yeah. if he, if there was a house party, yeah, he'd just yeah, be... he would. Yeah, there was a there was a little scene there. We had a guy named Six Six Two Forty. Okay, he made a song called The Gold and the Blue, 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 and we're coming for you, 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 Ooh. you. Yeah, and he uh, he debuted that, I think, my sophomore year after we won the Sugar Bowl, and that was when Pat and Steve and Owen and everybody was like, after that Sugar Bowl, the first BCS win in the history of West Virginia, and it was our freshman class, basically. Now, there was good seniors there, great seniors there. Lorello, Moses, there were some other guys. Uh, Jamal Adai, ah, People are not going to be happy, but I, I'm sorry. I wish I could remember, but it was a young, we're a young team. Okay. So yeah. we win the sugar bowl. Obviously this is massive back in Morgantown, West Virginia, a party school looking for something to celebrate. Just won a BCS game. Here's a reason to celebrate. As soon as we get back on campus, like, I mean, I was a freshman living in dorms at that point. Steve was a freshman living in dorms. I think Pat had a, I mean, it was fucking it was all, like me. We had a great time. People were making rap songs about Pat, Steve, and yeah. the team. There was other people. It was like part. It was. I mean, I had a, I had a party in my house where I think Dy performed. I think he was on the undercard for six six two forty. We in Sweet. our kitchen. In our kit. Yeah. It was. It was a great. It was a movie. Our, I was so lucky to be a part of incredible teams where I probably shouldn't have been, to be honest with you, at different times. But it was just like. It's a fucking joke. And every time I talk to people about their college experience, I don't want to be a fucking asshole when they're like, oh, we go to this place. It's fucking insane. It's like, all right, man, I, I went to school in Baghdad, dude. There was, yeah. Hey, there was no rules. Cars yeah. being flipped and burned. Yeah, the whole streets getting doused with beer bottles at midnight or at uh, 2 a.m. or something when walking on broken glass plays in one house and everybody just starts <laughs> hucking their shit. It was insane. It was so much fun. I had an absolute blast in that thing. But it, but it is tough. To, you know, because you sound like an asshole. Oh, we had the craziest school. It's like, I, I bet you did, man. I understand. Yeah, it was a good time. That's what I do now. And then I just kind of walk it on because I went to Little Five here in Bloomington. Huge party. I guess it's a bicycle race that they turn into a festival. It's awesome. It was, it was a great time. It was unbelievable. But that was like Wednesday in Morgan. <laughs> yeah. like, like that, that is exactly what it was. And we, we kind of were, I think, and they tried to change this with old Gordon Gee and 
I think when Oliver Luck got in there and everything, it was like South Harmon Institute of Technology. Mm -hmm. It was. Everyone I mean, no, just doing whatever they wanted to do. The really smart people that go to West Virginia, there's a good PT school. There's a good uh, athletic training school. I think there's a good nursing school there. There's like for that, there, there's a couple schools, I think, that are very, very good there. They probably hate what the rest of us did. But everybody else that went there, and I might be speaking out of turn here, like we take a lot of pride in the fact that like, we survived Morgantown. Yeah. Like, that is not something that you do. It's, uh, but that place, I don't think there's any. Uh, I don't think there's any Rhodes Scholars coming. Out. <laughs> so, so that Sugar Bowl like put the football program on the map. Would you say? And then was yeah. the basketball already there? Football team was still liked. Yeah, football team was liked, liked, liked. But then whenever you win a Sugar Bowl yeah. and that, and it's a lot of freshmen playing, it just becomes like. A, you know what I mean? Even more so. Yeah, it's like, just like, okay, so the, the freshman class is like, okay, we got a team here on the, it feels like the yeah. vibe is like, hey, we're building, so it was cool. It was awesome. I was very lucky to go there. Very lucky. I mean, I'm, I won't live as long because of it, mm -hmm. but I can share stories with a lot of people because of it. Worth it. Yeah. yeah. What I learned in Morgantown carried me into a locker room in the NFL and won over a lot of people that mm -hmm. probably wouldn't have been friends with the punter fight, I guess. So shout out to Morgantown. Yeah, possibly Peyton Man. Bingo. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you could just make a beard disappear faster than everybody, you're probably going to win over a football locker yeah. room, whether people are drinking or not. Like that guy. And I really <laughs> honed that in at Mor in Morgantown, West Virginia. Work honed it the in. craft. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, we're back on the other side. Wavy Davey back on the track and he going crazy. Yeah! I mean, he's unbelievable. Very good. He's making a bunch of music for us. I wanted to make the announcement here on this very slow Wednesday, June 23rd. <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll hit some more sports coverage on the other side. Some phone calls. AJ Hawk will join us and another maybe surprise guest here Whoa. in the middle of summer on hashtag PMS 100K giveaway weekday three. Let's have a good one. We'll see you in four minutes. Get your feet up off my dashboard. Let's go. Wearing a beat up car, heart, screaming R.I.P. Dale Earnhardt. Yeah. Travis called heads. No! Sorry. You're not sorry. I, I'm sorry that it worked out this way, but I told you. You're not I sorry. Had to trust my instincts. You asked me what I thought. I thought it was going to be heads. Damn, really? I didn't what about Travis to Kelsey going out put there? Thirty K on it. Hey, I mean, was that the cleanest toss of all time? No, it was Great. terrible. But it, that thing took one bang straight in. What a horse shit toss. They watered, <laughs> they watered the field. Old Notre Dame versus USC. They raised the grass. And... <laughs> you son of a bitch. We all know that wasn't a fair coin toss. No, it was. They should not. redo it. It was a lot worse than 50-50 after fucking watching that. Mm-hmm. A lot of people say that's why you don't bet thirty thousand on a coin toss. You know? <laughs> seems like seems like a reasonable thing to bet thirty k on. Because you got no control. <laughs> you got no control God, so I guess not even like a thought to go into it. Well, Christmas is canceled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're giving away a lot, but not nowhere near as much as we once had thought. No, no. Remember that double seventy k? Take it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Fandle just made so much money right there. Uh -huh. I don't care how good the form is. You get it. This thing moves from this area to up in this area. That's one. You do prices if you want. <laughs> now, do those two count? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, those two count. All right, here we go. Three, four. Am I near 70 or 80? What do you think? I would guess near 80. I can pump out another 20, right? All right, so I guess I'm near 80 too, right? I would say 80. Come on, you know? 
Get a good pump. We're gonna have to run that back to get the actual count, but that's how we got the number. So I hope you won, man. Hope you won one of the TVs or $25,000. I mean, they're burning a little bit. They're burning a little bit. This is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. Whether you're taking care of the kids or taking care of business, you've got to take care of your body and keep those energy levels up. Hell yeah! The new Roman Daily Multivitamin will help you do just that. Sometimes you can't rely on your diet alone to get all the nutrients mm -hmm. your body needs mm -hmm. to keep your engine purring. True. The easy to swallow pill is available in monthly subscriptions for $35 a month, or you can save with a quarterly subscription for $87. Smart. This is a really easy way to support physical activity, brain health, your immune system, and heart health. No prescription required. The Roman Daily is coated with a slick coating of natural peppermint oil, so there's no unpleasant aftertaste. Remember, supplements are not a replacement for a healthy diet, mm -hmm. exercise, and good sleep. You've still got to go eat your greens and get your uh, steps in. That's still. the truth. Oh, yeah. These statements have not been evaluated by Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. So start your day off right with $15 off your first order of Roman Daily. To get started, head over to GetRoman.com slash Pat Show. Uh, that's GetRoman.com forward slash Pat Show uh, to get $15 off your first order. Roman Daily is making you, you. Shout out Roman. <laughs> Goddamn right it is. Shout out to Roman. Uh, welcome back to the show. I mean, there's a lot of tweets about why I'm talking to a musician I see now. Oh, I, uh, I don't have any range. I don't have any depth. I can't mean? be happy oh. for an old friend. Yeah, come on. Come Maybe on. Davey was performing on, in my kitchen in college. I listen to his music every week. Jeez. Now he's making bangers. Come come on. On. I want to hear from the guy. Show some respect, people. Never ends. Never, Never ends. ends. Good I guess Lord. you can't make everybody happy, but I no. I am happy for the fact that people do watch along and listen and get upset while still listening as opposed to going somewhere else. I appreciate that. By the way, that reason of, you know, you potentially just never watching again is why I chug a Celsius heat a day. Yep. Uh, 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 Two of these big, tall green teas a day. Uh -huh. While well, I'm probably going to die at an yeah, earlier age than I could sure. have ever imagined, even after the Morgantown drinking, because every single day I legitimately think, like, okay, we're going to have the best show of all time today. Something's going to happen today that's going to be better than any other time. I'm going to be honest. I think the reason why I didn't want to ever take a break is because I'm potentially at the point where I'm like, there's no way this show's going to be any good. Tomorrow, there's no time at all. And we're on a break leaving in two days. So what are we going to do? So maybe that is why the people are upset with the David Moore. I could have given more to David Morris. Nah. I think that's all me. Because David Morris, by the way, son of a bitch is going to win a Grammy. Yeah, so, he is. Yeah. He's going to win a Grammy. Yeah, you got to have those people on the show. Come on. There was a guy named Macklemore that was independent to won a Grammy or whatever. Yeah. A lot of people aren't happy about it. There's probably other albums that everybody loved or whatever, yeah. but he did the whole independent thing and he got he made it all the way to the top. Hey, why can't Wavy Davey, why dude? Who says back no? Back in misbehaving, huh? Oh, yeah. Who says he can't? Not me. What, they want Haji back on? I don't think I've heard anybody do that. Now, I... <laughs> Nobody Except asked for Merrill Hodge to come back on. Hey. Except for Ty. Hey, Merrill Hodge, by the way. <laughs> listen, Merrill Hodge. Bring Ryan Kerrigan back. God. Oh, God. Where's Jerry Rice at? Hey, that. Merrill Hodge came out of nowhere. I did not expect that. Out of I, I, I had no idea. Why? That came out of nowhere. I did not do enough research for that show either. Okay? So there's been a couple times where I haven't brought my best game. 
more than a couple, numerous times it has happened. But there's been a couple here now where I haven't really been up to snuff, so I apologize. But no, hey, you can still win $25,000 of our money. Oh, yeah. yeah, You can still win one of two beautiful tailor-made golf sets. Yes. What? I mean, there's a lot that can go down here on this beautiful Wednesday, June 23rd. And on the other side, A.J. Hawk's going to be joining wow. us. It's Super Bowl every day for A.J. Hawk, Woo! except for when he's driving, because oh, then he'll yes. kill you. Uh -huh. We'll see you in six. I just saw a picture of you getting out of, I think, a 757 that is from Jim Ursay. What was that? And have you ever been in that plane before? I, I thought it was like a, the team plane to fly all of the Indianapolis Colts. <laughs> I, uh, literally, I mean, it's got the logo on it, uh, Pat, and uh, it was awesome. But uh, look, that's just Jim. Pat, I had a wonderful 14 years there. It, I, it's obviously the team that I wanted to play for always. You know, I, I understood the, the, the decision he had to make. and. No hard feelings, and uh, for him to send his plane to fly me and my son down here, uh, it, it was a great, great gesture. A lot of room for me and Marshall. We were throwing the football. <laughs> so, pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty cool experience. Pretty cool father-son weekend. By the way, as he's moving from event to event right now, <laughs> you are the best, dude. Where are you headed right now? I'm going to the game. I'm going to the game. I got Lynch. I got Fanica. I got these guys in the background. So, boys, uh, how you? Congratulations! Yeah. Congratulations, boys! All right, Peyton. Oh, hey, there he is, Marshall. I hope you enjoyed that plane, pal. Hey, Peyton. <laughs> last thing here. Um, you talking to Tom Brady? You becoming friends with him? Uh, it was interesting to watch. Oh yeah, take the photo. Take the photo. <laughs> 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 All right, we will wrap this up. Well, I tell you, Pat, um, I don't think anybody can do what, what Tom has done. Look, I know how hard it was for me to get on the same page with my receivers, learn a new system, learn new coaches. But I had a full off season. I was injured. I was rehabbing. The fact that Tom has done this in a COVID pandemic off season, no time to meet with his receivers. He met with his coaches illegally by breaking into Byron Leverage's house. <laughs> So besides that, uh, it's been incredible what he's been able to accomplish, and uh, he deserves all the credit. His leadership is, is what put the Bucks in this game today, and uh, I have great respect for him because I know how hard it is, but uh, he deserves all the credit. Hey, how did you know Red 18 was coming? Pat, I mean, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you telling that story and, and just growing the legend. That was about the 18th time I tried it. I was 17 going into that. And, you know, when it doesn't hit, you just keep walking. And nobody ever really tells you about it. So when it hit, I was as surprised as you were. And uh, the reaction from, from some of the some of the good old folks there in the casino that night was uh, pretty special. Well, I appreciate you doing that. You made me and those folks in the casino a bunch of money. Congrats on the Hall of Fame nod. Thank you for spending time. Enjoy yourself at the game, Peyton. Pat, thanks, pal. I appreciate you. The, sher you. the Sheriff Hall of Famer, Peyton. Oh, yeah! Final cord <laughs> is severed. Look to your right. Look to your right. Look to your right a little bit. I'm sick of you, Pokemon nerds, hustling my fucking dog. I'm getting pretty sick of them too. Yeah. I only learned American history. I don't know shit about it anywhere else. You had wow. to. Have, I mean, you don't even know American history. Yeah, I do. I know almost everything about America. Who's your second the, president? Uh, Sam Adams. Wrong. <laughs> 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 to fear. Close. John Adams. Yeah. So you got half close? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it turns out when you don't do all your shopping at the gas station, there are other dogs. Huh. That's, that's kind of Wait, they have more than hot dog bugs? <laughs> One dollar bill in the America is... Undefeated. I mean, tried and true. As far as strip you guys don't have a one dollar bill? No, we got limited some time. <laughs> Fucking uh, undercover cop. What? Go volunteer firefighter today. Yeah. What is this? I don't know. I saw these glasses. I was it's like, I just got it's these. The hat. <laughs> just the. I mean, it does look like. Imagine hey, you guys want, want some weed? Just know where to go. Right there. Yeah. No, no, look left. Look left. There it is. Right here. Wow. Yeah, that's nice. That's Look, good. Good. Oh, Bill is bald.
Bill, that is not coming back. I was sailing, but I hit the buffet before I left, and I ate so much food, dude. So much food. And I, I was used to being on boats, but I went on the smaller boat, like with the parasailing shit. And yeah, dude. I remember I took down like two pizzas, three burgers. I got to Parasol puked all over the place. Oh, <laughs> Dumb? Like, what is no. that? No. So, what they did after all the stuff that happened with him, they actually cut <laughs> Ron Jeremy's that penis thing. off and <laughs> planted, planted it in this, uh, this pad. Hey, as we get back into society, let's remember. People will punch you in the fucking mouth. Yeah. Uh -huh. Shot of air is at second. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back to that show, hour two, on this beautiful Wednesday, June 23rd, 2021, years after zero. We'll begin immediately following this beat drop from Twine. Shout out to Twine, Woo! incredible music from him. Joining us now from an attic in Ohio, ladies and gentlemen, AJ Hall. Yeah! Yeah! Okay, couple quick things, AJ. I want to let you know. These are maybe the most uncomfortable hats I've ever worn <laughs> in my entire life. Have what are? What is it? So it's this is a Coastal Carolina Chanticleer hat. Okay, the oh, hair. Yeah. You see the hair? You can see AJ. I don't know if you could see. Can you see? Can you see the hair? Yeah, it looks good, man. It's long. Okay, so we're at a point now it where it's long, and when I go to Smack Don, they have a barber on site. Ooh, he is a. Great barber, the too. best barber of all time. Maybe, maybe. So I get caught up in these times, especially with pay per view. The hair gets too long. I can't do anything with it. I don't know what to do because I got calyx all over the place. Hey, I think I'm going with your hairstyle. By the way, I think I'm going to start doing your hairstyle. Your hair is curly though. Like my hair is dead straight. I don't know if you could do it. Yeah, but that's. I think I'm going to be able to grow. I think I'm going to grow something pretty. I don't think I'll be able to do the tight don thing that you got there. I don't think I want that. I think I'm going with the. Uh, I think I'm going to use the bounce in my hair oh, to do. A, yeah, yeah, one of those. One of those big. Because I think if once if I start bouncing around on SmackDown <laughs> with the headset holding down it in oh. the middle, and if it starts, I think there is a couple good moments that could happen. I think this is the only barber that could get me there. So today I'm like, all right, going to wear a new hat. Found I forgot that I got sent this hat from the fall. Shout out to the Chanticleers, by the way. The Roosters out there I ain't caulking around. The the but this hat is terrible. I mean, it's a bad hat, dude. It is a bad hat. But uh, our big heads probably not big hat folks, huh? AJ, you big hat guy, never right. Uh, when I had long hair, I was just to keep it out of my eyes, basically, and I didn't want to mess with it. But I, every hat now, though, I, I like is. You know the uh, like the flex fit. It doesn't really matter the size, really. You get like large or extra large. Yeah, I, I, I do the Fanduel hat. What's that? That's a fifty nine fifty or something like uh, that. Forty seven, Brad. Is it? Yeah, is that what yeah. it is? Whatever the Fanduel hat is, it is so comfortable. That, yeah. But it's the only one that I like, so I just wear the same thing. Now look, look at this. Look at that thing. It's good. No, it's dig. It's taking my. It's hitting <laughs> me. In, marks over there. It's all. It's a kill shot on my forehead right Jeez. now. It, is that like? A, is that for? For a youth, is that like a youth small or something? No, dude, it's all the way out here. I mean, we can go. I guess. Hey, why didn't you tell one. me too in that uh, in your curl competition that you weren't doing bicep curls? You're doing hammer curls. That's a much different thing. 
Okay, and at the beginning of the video, did you hear me say, I don't want to hear fucking shit about the form. <laughs> yeah. I'm not talking about the form. Your hammer curl form was great, but it, that's not a bicep curl. I, num I curl and do my biceps, okay? I'm sorry I, I'm not at the, uh, I'm not reading the it's sign. A on exercise. The it's a completely different exercise. Okay. You fooled us. You you, you fooled everybody. I, see, fooled us come on. I do apologize. I do apologize. I, I you know I do. I, I am sorry. Hammer curls. I, I thought you would. If you said hammer curls, I would have said he can do five hundred for sure. Okay, so of course. <laughs> yeah. All right, right oh, oh, If my. you're not if you're not twisting your wrist and isolating that peak of that bicep, you can do oh, 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 yeah. isolating. Hey, I want to let you know you were the person I was talking to at the beginning of this video. Will you run the beginning of the video? I want to let. I want to let all the yous out there know that I addressed you at the beginning of the video. I no, knew this didn't. was coming. No, you didn't. Yes. I would yeah, never critique yeah, your yeah. form. I wouldn't critique your form if you said, hey, I'm going to be doing hammer curls here, guys. But you did. You, <laughs> all you right. fooled us and said you're please, doing bicep curls. Please run this. karate kid. I don't care how good the form is. You get it. This thing moves from this area to up in this area. That's one. That was to you, AJ. I should have just said AJ Hawk and gang. That is to you <laughs> yeah. on the internet. You guys love that shit. You guys can't wait for that shit. Oh, oh who that's quite. Hey, I didn't even flat back. What are you doing? Oh, that no, I don't want that one of these. Uh, that ain't like a good one. I know back in the day, a couple years ago, didn't Donald Trump Jr. posted him deadlifting and people were killing his form. Like, I would never sit there and kill his form because he said, hey, Here's me deadlifting. If you would have said, here's me hang cleaning, and he was deadlifting, I'd be like, well, then we're doing a different thing here. What are we talking about? Oh, that's what you're saying. I did. I, I told you I was, uh, but did I? I said curls. Yes. Yeah, you yeah. just said curls. And those are curls. Those are curls. Say yeah. what the name of the thing I did was. You did hammer curls. Okay, bye. Oh, okay. I'm so sorry. Let's do that again. Let's do the first word, second word, just so I can hear you clear, because I think I may be misunderstanding something. What's the first word? You did hammer curls. Much okay. different. Is there a space in between those two, or is that one big combined word like uh, a You can good do night? it however you want, but there normally would be a space if you put it on paper. So okay. that's two different words. So that would that'd be a descriptive word for what's that second one then there? Curls. Boom. Mm. Put the picture back up of what the contest was? No. Oh. The, the yesterday, the picture yep. with the, the whole thing. It. I mean, if, it, if you put parentheses hammer before curls, then yeah, it's, no, no, it's no, legit, no, but it's not no, legit. No, 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 Hold on. I don't know what I, I don't want you to take the guy's money on TV. How many curls did the stooge on the left here do? Huh. Oh. So what did you say I did? How about that, clown? You did 139 hammer curls. Good job. Okay, so that's a that was the curl that I chose to do. Yep. The fact that you assumed it was a different isolation one, that's on you and your crew. I addressed you guys at the beginning, mm -hmm. by the way, and in the wording of the It's team. not really a subjective thing. It's it's two different exercises. You know that. What are the two exercises? Hammer curls or just basic bicep curls? Wow. Okay, they're curls. It's your okay, your well, grip and what you're doing with Listen, your hand you're adding and your wrist the whole time. You got a great like grip and forearm workout there. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't hit your biceps as much as you would like. <laughs> Workout dictator. Hey, no, where did it happen? No, no, no. Uh, now that is something that I would. <laughs> that's something that's cool. I think if you guys were to say that, if your crew of people were to say something like that, it's like, oh, thank you, meatheads that work out every day for don't teaching. Don't put me in it. Don't. No. no yeah. yeah don't you're label there. I don't, I don't need a label. Don't put me in. No, but people. you guys come in. People on the internet. For you guys me. come. You guys come barging into people's comments. <laughs> and, excuse me. I fucking do this every morning. All right. That is not good form. You need to tighten that up, tighten that up. You're going to blow your patella out and your back at the same time. This is pathetic. No. Is that lifting? No. And then you guys leave. It's like, hey, hey, we need you in our society, okay? You mm -hmm. superhuman, wake up every morning, do these insane workouts and know the intricacies of every muscle and detail. We need you. Why can't you guys just do what your bio is saying? Like, hey, taking over the world, being the best <laughs> me. Why can't you guys come into the comments and be like, hey, listen, you turn that fucking hand a little bit, maybe tighten up that bicep, but those are good looking curls. Instead, you guys always have to do the look down upon us regular folk mm -mm. that don't want to waste entire uh, entire lives in the gym like why do you guys do that why, why are you guys so negative this, first off don't label me with anybody don't lump me in with with a group of people well, you're the uh, face of you're it dude IG i don't have an issue with your yeah. 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 hammer curl form was fine you did some good hammer curls there but what i'm saying if you're doing a competition and i need to guess how many you're going to do i need to be specific, you need to describe exactly what you're doing. And you did not do that. You questions. misled everybody. So These you should have asked then, AJ, if you weren't sure. Every time I ask a question, you go, oh, okay, Stooge, you need more questions? <laughs> like you guys freaked out when I asked the question. <laughs> 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 
Hey, do you that. Know that. Hey, I heard you do the queen curl, one time. Pal. You know what a curl is, pal. Just shut up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So I'm just saying, the 25K, I want the gentleman who, or lady, whoever got it, you need to keep that. The TVs, they need to keep it. But I just, for future competitions or things like this, you need to have that in mind. And we need to ask more, some more questions as an audience. Okay, here. How about today's? Have you heard today's? And have you got an official guess in today's? You put, you're putting something? Hashtag PMS 100K giveaway week day three now. We will give away, uh, as of the week, tallied together, $25,000 a day, $75,000 total after today, and two sets of over $1,000 golf clubs yeah. uh, to three people that pre uh, accurately guess how many times it took me to putt from that spot to 45 feet dead straight ahead in between the rock and stone cold and the fan duel pillars down below there into an actual hole thing uh, that mm -hmm. you buy to put at the end of the hallway? How many do you think it was? And do you have any more brain busters? Any more <laughs> questions, Mr. Hawk? I mean, this one seems to be more straightforward. I guess the video tomorrow <laughs> will will show if that plays out. But yeah, I, I would. I'm guessing upwards of 200 putts. Okay, All right. <laughs> fair. Fair. I would normally get offended, but that's a tough putt. I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> We, uh, the floor doesn't help out There's either. a few of us that attempted this, and it was uh, uh, there wasn't a lot of show prep, okay, before, because we we're potentially trying to accomplish yeah. the giveaway <laughs> for the day, because... Hey, how early did you get in? When did you start? Hey, this thing? was a... There's a lot of people that have a lot of faith in me, and I want to let them know I appreciate the fuck out of you. Love okay? you guys. The people that said, like, a very low number, you're the best, okay? <laughs> I... I just unrealistic. I thrive. Up. No, listen, AJ. I thrive and, and do everything. I drink all these Celsius in this green tea uh -huh. and probably going to die because of the people that said, Pat's going to do that in three putts. Okay? Those be I fucking love you guys. All right? I couldn't do anything without you. But God damn it, this particular time, I think I'm going to. I think I'm gonna let some people down. Yeah, let's I get think scared. I'm gonna let some people down. <laughs> yeah. I mean, th that putt may take Tiger twenty or twenty-five tries. I hey, by the way, while I was doing it, and I had numerous thoughts during it, <laughs> I I immediately went to myself and thought about the twenty million dollars, <laughs> and I thought to myself that there's no way there'd be forty-nine people in the Champion Store on one weekend that could make the putt that I was making before me. No chance. And that, is, yeah. that is literally what I thought. It's a tough putt. That looks flat. I thought our office was flat. Turns out it is not. Nope. We got a putt-putt miniature golf hole as a fucking basketball court out there. This thing was moving, AJ. It was unbelievable. So what, someone gets 25K if they, the first person to guess how many tries it took you? Yeah, 25K. And then the second and third people to guess? 212. Okay. Did you tweet it? Hashtag PMS 100K giveaway week day yeah. three. Shoot it out there for me, Billy. Whoever wants to. <laughs> Shoot it out. Hey, if Billy has your login, that's awesome. <laughs> hey, Bill. Hey, Bill. That's, that's a very, uh, that's a lot of power you hold if you have his goddamn login. Does Bill have your login? Is he tweeting for you? No, I, I believe I am the only person that has my login. I was just hoping maybe he could figure uh, it out and do it for uh, me. Uh, yeah, I want to believe that. Huh? Yeah, you never know in this. All right, let's talk about some sports stuff. We just talked golf. First hour, we talked David Morris live from the Heartland. I know you love him, so that's very – kind of, kind of Did he bummed. play football with you? No, just party. Just, he was at all the parties. Performing. Hey, beer like, pong with you. Yeah. What, what genre of football. music does he do? He, he's – he doesn't have a genre, doesn't dude. All. He's all genres. He's an amoeba. Come he's on. wavy Davy. He's like water. You know, you know how Bruce Lee talked about being water? He's, he's gelatinous. Yeah, yeah, he's very gelatinous. There you go. He's kind of just bouncing through, like, you know, different genres. Like, oh, how are we doing? All right. Oh, I like this one. We're going to go into this one now. You know what I mean? That's what and the part, I, the part I caught, is he going to do, like, your intro music for WWE? I think so. We'll see. We will see. I, I think so. I think he's going to give it a go at least. We chatted about yeah, that a balls little bit. Balls in his court. Yeah, he's going to give it a go, I think. We'll see. He might not like it. I think he is a super uber creative person, so it might not. he might not find it maybe in there. I think that's kind of his thing, but maybe he crushes it. Yeah. Maybe he crushes and it. And those are kind of tougher, right, because he's only making a minute, like a no, minute. No, no, it'll be. Or is he making a you full? You have to make yeah, a full, full track. Like you have to make the beginning very like there's not a lot of big, yeah, but yeah. then you have to be able to carry it on too. I think he could do it. We had we had good discussion about what I thought it could do. You know, 
I got the utmost faith that Dave yes. will get it done. Well, and we have to own the rights completely mm -hmm. because when the WWE, if now this is if we get it figured out for how I go to live shows, which once again, Lamar Jackson and his mother, Felicia Jones, negotiating with the Baltimore Ravens. They are handling the deal publicly. Everybody's saying everything's going good because I think it probably is going good because it's a personal thing. I think that we are going to figure it out. Yeah. It, it does feel as if there's a lot of, you know, it feels like it's good old school. It feels like it's really good business going on. Going right. It yeah. feels like it does. It feels like there's been I'm at a point now where I'm pretty comfortable too. I've been through a couple of these where I know what I'm allowed to potentially ask as opposed to just offending somebody immediately upon saying something. So which has happened in the past with a company before that I was talking to. So I think there's I feel like we're in a good spot. We're going to get it done. And if we do, I mean, I'm getting an intro in every arena. I oh, mean, yeah. that is I mean, we've got to we got to. JR used to come out to uh, the Oklahoma um, song, the, o the Boomer Sooner The song. Sooner fight song. Whatever, whatever the fight song was, yeah. the whole thing would play. Um, Michael Cole, last time I think I seen Michael Cole, his music played, he came out, and at that time their, their set was on the stage. So he just came out and waved and just walked over there, like head down almost. <laughs> I'm like, I gotta walk all the way from up here, all the way down to there. And there's gonna be people in here that are either gonna boo the shit out of me, or people that are gonna be like, what's up? I mean. It has to be a little bit of a banger. I wonder if they'll, I wonder if they'll kibosh it though. If it's no, like, I can't. It's part of the show. It's part of the show. Yeah, it's these part. people bought a ticket. Yes. You want me to walk out like two hundred yards and just do nothing? What am I putting my head? No way. Especially if they're booing and shit. Hey, and give you're me a mic. To... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Give me a mic. So maybe Wavy Davies just a quick song because I'm gonna be. Yeah, hold on. Cut the music. Here. Yeah. <laughs> they're not gonna let me do any of that. But yeah, we need a good song. Is mm -hmm. what I'm saying. That should be a good time. Right. I would assume WWE and. Triple H and Vince McMahon have to sign off on it, though, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's what I'm saying whenever I say probably none of that's going to happen. Yeah. But we can think about it, you know, because there's there's a flow to a show that has to go, you know? Like, mm -hmm. that is that is kind of a Ooh. big part of it. And uh, you kind of, you know? So there's a, there's a way things have to go. And I very much understand that and respect that. But I am going to have to fucking walk in front of thousands. Hey! Thousands of people, so I would like something that I can maybe at least you know look alive to a little. Yeah, maybe you know, a couple microphones a around. around. Nah, yeah, you just, know? <laughs> just a quick little. Hey, I fuck know. you! But I've never been. Listen to this. So I've never done any wrestling thing like since I like you know the whole thing. I did kickoff shows a few of them. I did like four or five of those, I guess. So those were in front of crowds. But since wrestling and me becoming an actual like person, it feels like in that world, I've never done it in front of crowds. NXT I watched last night has a crowd now, and I'm like, man, yeah. God damn, oh. like that would have been awesome. And then I go over to SmackDown, and it's like the Thunderdome, which is. The most impressive thing I've ever seen in entertainment, by the way. It is, people talk about big sets, and there's people that get congratulated for big sets and stuff, and they're talked about and celebrated and all that. In the wrestling business, people get sick of things, obviously, so the luster kind of gets lost in a little bit. That Thunderdome is one of the best sets I've ever seen in my entire, that thing has to cost millions and millions and millions yeah, of dollars. Money. Millions of dollars with how nice it is. But I haven't got a chance to really be in front of people, so like I am, they're gonna hate me when I stand, but I am Fucking, I'm pumped for it, AJ. I'm excited to get out there. Let's do a show, you know? Yeah, I'm curious to see how it goes. Yeah, when you stand up and everything, you, you'll be blocking probably the, the first couple rows, right? Yeah, children probably, right? Can they not? Sorry. Is there a chance that they just don't sell those seats? No, they're going to sell it. Mm -hmm. Every seat in the house. No, they're just going to have to watch it again at home. Yeah. <laughs> figure, Sorry. Figure it out, kids. Yeah. Figure it yeah. out. No, I have wondered that. Like, can you, can you leave a spot empty? right behind me Should. so it's one row because those seats are normally all you know they're put down like yonder here the chair they're the chair seats because yeah. those some at pay-per-views you can take those home with you right but at the regular shows wow. it's just the arenas or whatever but those, Wait, you just snatch them if you're if you're if you're in a folding chair you can take it home yeah if you're on like the floor at like um where wrestlemania SummerSlam, mm -hmm. I assume they'll have that. There's a couple other pay-per-views they have. You just take the chair. We have a couple chairs around here from yeah. WrestleMania yeah. and a couple other things. But those ones are arena rented, I think, for SmackDown. I, I, they have to be able to just leave a space. I mean, if Boogs comes out, everyone's going to be standing on their yeah. chair anyways. You're right. You're right. Well, and that's the thing, too. If you can't see and you're standing up, stand on your goddamn chair. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but then that... So back in the day, there used to be all those posters and everything. People used to go crazy. That was like a big part of Raw was like the posters like and what people were writing and saying. And then 
Now that I go to a live event, that had to be terrible. That had to block what? Massive. So many. Oh, that had to block five, everybody. Five like, rows back, probably. I at home, I'm watching. Oh, that's a cool sign. And then everybody in the arena is like, fuck that sign. <laughs> yeah. That is a billboard right in front of what I just paid to come watch. So I saw how that kind of disappeared. You know, like that That kind of stopped happening. And, and I could see why, you know, after the whole thing. But the whole... Uh, the whole standing instead of sitting, like a lot of people sit and watch it as if it's like, you know, the, the standing thing is, I, I'm just, I'm always, a, I'm a stander if it's something, if something's going on, like, hey, let's go. Let's, well, what are we sitting the fuck around for? Yeah, let's, if you're a massive fan, it's like, hey, you watch yeah. this every week at home, you finally get to be back in the stadium, stand hey, stand the fuck up. And I am booing the shit out of somebody. <laughs> yeah. I and mean, I am letting somebody, oh, hey, you're dead, ah, loser. Like, I, that is the wrestling world in my eyes. Like, that hey, is, how would you feel that? How would you feel if you went to a baseball game and the people in front of you were standing the whole time and they they gave the same example to you, like how excited they were to be there and you should be excited too? Yeah, I know. And I, but I, I mean, nobody's I, watching every single baseball game at home on the couch. Yeah, I mean, but let's talk like the, the Colts fans, for instance. Colts fans. <laughs> so there's some places you go where standing <laughs> is the thing, right? Like standing is yeah. the protocol. There's some places that are, you know, like when you go there, it's going to be a day. Like I think Baltimore is pretty much. You know, like they're going to be in it. Like they're going to be loud. They're going to be standing. Nice. Pittsburgh, yeah, Seattle Pittsburgh's like is that. like Seattle's that. As Seattle's as well. like that. I think um, Gillette's pretty damn close. Yeah, I was about to say New England feels like it's like that. And it's cold too, by the way. I think when it's cold, people want to stand too. I think potentially it might get a little chill. I don't know. I might be wrong, but there's some places where you go and it feels like it is the culture is like, hey, these seats are seats, but they were just our pass in here. Basically, yeah. we are standing. We are yelling. We'll sit whenever there's halftime or something going on, but it feels like some places are like that. The Indianapolis Colts, they are not. It is so comfortable. The The seats are so nice, and so everything's such good. It's like a couple people almost got kicked out of stadium uh, for standing up <laughs> and blocking people's view, and I was almost like, man, I wish... See, I wish we had everybody doing yeah. that, but those seats are expensive and they are very fucking nice. So the, I think there's just two different environments. The best is you'll be at a game, and depending on the game or the environment, like people will start standing up for third down or something, and you'll see a guy like, oh, come on, yeah, like, I'm fine. And then, they, and then that, the whole section stands. It's like, and like 50 50 percent, 50 50 on like who wants to be standing and who has to be standing. How good does it feel, the drunk person that started the stand though? You know, oh. like the one fan that was a bigger fan Come than on. everybody, the one fan that was turning around like AJ and the fitness people doing the comment section of anybody that does anything fitness related yep. that isn't a fitness person. They start looking around, they go, You, you, you stand. Are you fan? You don't like them. Come on. Oh. I've seen, I've seen full yells. It's thrown down. <laughs> yeah. Like I've seen seen that out of fans and I appreciate the hell out of that passion but then in the fourth quarter and it's something big and he's up and everybody stands like his thought of like he probably feels like he is the yeah. he's the captain of the like stadium God, yeah, he people has, from there the has dead. to be that feeling <laughs> yeah. from that person when that happens it's you know there's good moments I think Madison Square Garden was maybe my favorite that came out of the quarantine I thought that was electrifying there. The the Islanders as well. That place yeah. was unbelievable. I watched that because they were bullying our goalie into absolute submission yeah. so much so they he forgot how to play hockey and ended our run. It's all right. Tampa's going to beat the shit out of the Islanders, but the Islanders had an amazing run in that whole thing. But last night in Arizona, did you see this? Did you see how this game ended? I saw how it ended. Yeah, I didn't watch the whole game. The place was packed. That place, mm -hmm. they were bout about it out there. We saw videos out of, was it Ayton's? Yeah, it was. It was uh, DeAndre, Ayton's, yeah. DeAndre Ayton's car last week, I think, or two weeks ago, whenever they beat the Lakers, maybe yeah. two weeks ago. He said outside, when they were pulling out of the arena, the fans were in the parking lot just blocking his way. They opened up like a, a small path, and they were screaming and yelling. It was a full, like, Buffalo Bills arriving back in Buffalo at – 3 a.m. or whatever yeah. in the snow moment. It was one of those things, and I was like, I, I remember hearing that the Suns had a massive fan base out there because back in the past with Charles Barkley and all that, but last night, it feels like that entire state is riding with them. Devin Booker without Chris Paul, I mean, it is Suns in four guys beating the shit out of people. They're beating up Clippers fans. Yep. I mean, they, they, it feels like Phoenix is maybe the place to watch a game right now in the NBA. That was a, It's electric over there, AJ. Well, they came out of nowhere, didn't they? Like, haven't they been pretty bad leading up to this? Yeah. So they yeah, had a good performance at the bubble last year, 
and then it all kind of stemmed Devin from Devin Booker that. shot the lights out. Yeah. Then Chris Started Paul, dating yeah. a Kardashian yeah. yep. because yeah. of the, the whole thing. And then Chris Paul gets moved to Oklahoma City, then to there right before he even plays, I think. Right? Uh, he signed with Phoenix in the offseason. Okay, yeah. so he goes to Phoenix or whatever, and he, it just feels like – once he beats COVID, if it's anything like John Rom or Diggs's COVID that they got, there's a bunch of strains, I guess. Hey, Delta is coming. You mentioned that yesterday. I did a little research. I guess that son of a bitch is oh, coming. Yeah, look out. Hey, I want to let you know, Delta, the, the, the smart people we had told me that I'm. We're ready. I'll stare you right down. Right here. Okay. To your point, though, AJ, DeAndre Ayton was the first overall pick in 2018. So they had to be pretty bad to get that. Well, let's talk about the first overall pick. That NBA lottery show was terrible last night. Oh, man. Did you see this thing? No, I saw that. Um, who was trending? Ben uh, for the Pistons. Ben Wallace. Ben Wallace, ben Wallace, ben Wallace, Wallace. looked awesome. He, obviously, everybody remembers Ben Wallace with the big-ass fro. Mm -hmm. And him just being Debo on the court. I mean, it was he was a, a favorite, I think, in almost every single city that he went to play in. Oh, yeah. um, he... Uh, was representing the Detroit Pistons, okay? He's sitting in their thing. Everybody had a representative, whether it was a GM or a fan or a famous person. And the way they did this show, AJ, they set up Nancy Leonard, okay? Wife and widow of uh, Slick Leonard, who is the Pacer legend, boom baby, uh, just been around the Pacers. I think I think he was a GM, a coach. He was the uh, a color commentator for the Pacers here locally. He's been here like 50, 60 years, this guy. I, I, that might be wrong. I don't know if it's that long, but for as long as I've been in Indiana, and I think long before me, this guy was like one of the closest associates in Indianapolis to the Pacers. So he passed away. It was a big deal. Obviously, rest in peace to Slick. But the his wife, was representing the Pacers in this draft, in this draft lottery show. And she's an, she's an older lady at this point of her life. She's, she's gone on and done a lot of great things. But they don't, the older generation, I don't think, fully understands and can catch on to what's going on as quickly, especially when you're involving Zoom, live, sh uh, live feeds, earpieces that are potentially behind as well if it's connected through either the phone or the Zoom or a Kodak, which is all three different things that Ugh. it could be connected into with different delays. So as they, this guy who had a lot of personality was picking the team's <laughs> lottery, uh, you know, the, 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 the whatever, you get it, the order, he was pulling up the name, it would say like Indiana Pacers, they win, uh, they get picked 14. This is early, I think it was only 16 or whatever. So it was very early, uh, 13 or 14. They pull the Pacers up, they put the card down. Guy says nothing. They cut to this, this lovely lady who is like a, I would assume she's beloved in Indianapolis by everybody. She's looking at the TV that is live probably in the room. They have a Zoom call on her and then there's an earpiece. She is caught in the middle of the most uncomfortable, awkward close up I've ever seen. She's. Oh, my God. And then she looks at the camera, and then they cut off back to big personality guy. Uh, he goes to the next team. Okay, he goes to the next team. Boom. That person all caught off guard, uncomfortable. Oh, even like a, a second and a half delay you see when they're on. Then they just roll. Swin Cash of the New Orleans Pelicans. She played the game. She has seen what was happening. She was comfortable, relaxed. She was the youngest, I think, that was being represented in there. She absolutely dominated. Hey, that's good for the Pelicans, by the yeah, way. Yeah, finally. They got somebody that can figure it out when everybody else can't. That's good news. Maybe they'll be able to build around Zion, keep his family happy, and maybe so we can watch him play basketball. Uh, that would be great if we got to see Zion play. Let's go ahead and figure that out, New Orleans. Here hey, you go, Pelicans. Let's go ahead and do that down there, Pelicans. And that thing. But it was a terrible show that ended with the uh, Detroit Pistons somehow ending up with the number one overall pick and obviously they're going to ruin that somehow because the Detroit sports fans understand that that's just how it goes but yeah basketball had a big night last night with that the alley-oop winner Devin Booker getting headbutted in the nose and the lottery shit show I mean there's NBA had a big night last night AJ well what network was this on this zoom show ESPN ABC. okay what you told me when we were talking about the ESPYs that hey shows aren't virtual anymore we're not doing that like award shows or oh, things like this God. why didn't they put them all together this is different a lot of elderly people with the draft lottery that are associated with it. They didn't want to bring all those people hour. together. You don't want to bring everyone in just for half an hour. Exactly. I disagree. Half I, by hour the way, show. I half disagree. hour prime time. Yeah, you do. I disagree. I mean, this is, I think they, AJ, to your point, while I was watching it, I was like, what the fuck are we doing? Why Why is Nancy Leonard getting set up like that? Like, let's, let's, and why is this guy 
he the thing he he would pull up these it was just who who was it I don't know I never seen a when person. it was live in person though all they do is sit there they don't talk so them sitting on camera or sitting in person isn't much different yeah. this show at least stinks. it's a to do though you plus know, when it gets like down to thing. the last three you, you get to see all three people on the same screen you is know, this the Nancy lady pissed. right here yes. Jesus. That's a picture, by the way, probably from the Pacers. Okay, That's yeah. on the side, right? Cause I was camera... trying to find the actual footage, but I didn't know if that was her. Well, no. shout out to the internet, by the way, who's normally, you know, would take advantage of all. I think, I think the internet last night, including me, was like, oh, these people are bitten. They were <laughs> zoomed in on their faces like this, too. It was like this close. And they had no, I was like four or oh, five. Or like, I was like, I'm like, what is this show? Because I saw an NBA lottery show. I'm like, I'm going to watch this. All right, here we go. And I watched, I'm like, this, this is the NBA lottery? I thought this was supposed to be a thing. And then I saw, the first person I saw was the Pacers. I'm like, we got pick 13. That's terrible, I know. And oh, this poor lady. That's, that was literally, and then I just watched for the next, I guess, what, two, three minutes there. And as people were getting picked, well, that means that the Cavaliers are not in the top four. Then they weren't even involved. I'm like, well, how the fuck that happened? It was a wild. I get that that's supposed to probably be electrifying. You know, anybody has a chance? Maybe next year after post-COVID, mm -hmm. COVID, COVID, we'll be able to get what that uh, electrifying moment, I guess. Plus, you know it's bad if the internet's not even commented on yeah. it and they feel bad about it. It's like, geez, <laughs> they're really doing these people dirty. And I don't think anybody was watching either. No. No. Yeah, luckily, yeah, luckily for them, there probably wasn't a whole lot of people tuned in. <laughs> You're making me want to watch it. Now I wish I would have watched yeah. it, and hearing I, you describe what okay, happened. Okay, so I assume it's not – I mean – Literally, as soon as I turned it on, I saw a draft lottery show, and I've heard basketball stooges in the office talk about how cool a draft lottery is. It's I've like, watched it before. I know I've watched it when they're all in person. Like, there's nothing really to do, and it is, it's a very tough setup to make a decent show. I don't think I've ever watched I think I've only watched well, clips. I don't think I've ever watched the actual show, and I assume a lot of people just clip watch that thing. But it was a, I saw it on, and there was nothing else on, and I'm like, all right, what are we doing here? And I watch and l immediately the Pacers and then that poor lady and I'm like, ah. Oh. And I knew exactly what it was with a Zoom call delay. And I was like, can somebody give them these people a heads up that they're about to be on? It was like a boom, boom, pow, ping, boom, back to guy, over to somebody that doesn't know they're on TV, uh, uh, and then back the guy, and then uh, uh, and then back. It was just. It just, it was, a, I was very confused. I'm like, how did this become the idea? I think, they're, uh, think there's a good chance they're going to win a sports Emmy for that. <laughs> It'll probably be up for it. Um, let's talk about our show, potentially <laughs> never winning one of those. Uh, Golden Tate, legendary wide receiver. Used to be a punt returner, by the way. I'm not sure if he's still punt returning. People know him from magical moments in Lions uniforms, Giants uniforms, uh, Seahawks, Seahawks, Seahawks. Seattle. Uh, uniforms. Now he has given out a list of teams that he would love to play for. I'm not sure this is a team, a list of teams that he's talking to. Maybe. I'm not sure. Maybe this is a feeler. Who knows? I would love to go back home to Tennessee, Indy, uh, over with Carson Wentz. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, here we go. Obviously, the LA Rams would be fantastic to get back with Stafford. Uh, said free agent wide receiver Golden Tate, who has his eye on a few teams he would play for in 2021 via Sirius XM NFL Radio. Uh, this guy, he's... He always produces, doesn't he, when he yeah. plays? Mm -hmm. It feels like he always oh, yeah. produces. And, and there was a time where I think he was viewed superstar, and then something happened. I don't know what it was. He was still making plays, still doing that. Just kind of fell out of the conversation piece all there. I would love him with the Indianapolis Colts. We need another weapon. I think I would enjoy it. Did, did you ever cross paths with him? Have you ever met him? Seems like a cool dude. Great guy. Yeah, I actually played with him in Tahoe one year. He's he's awesome. And you talk about a competitor. The dude is not scared of contact. I remember watching him back when he played at Notre Dame. Yeah. I mean, he's been making plays for a long time, but he, he's in a great spot where he can sit back and hang out and wait till the middle of camp or even week one, whenever, and, and see, hey, does a team that is a legit contender, do they need me? Like, injury, something happens, you go plug yourself into a good team. Um, he's a yak guy, right? Big mm -hmm. yak guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Big he's yak Tough guy. catch guy. Yeah, yeah, yards after catch. Big play guy. Uh -huh. But the Colts make, kind of make the most sense there. Colts are Titans. The Rams don't because Robert Woods and Cooper Cup are both making $60 million each. And they got Deshaun Jackson this offseason. But at this point, right, Golden Tate's probably not taking – that, I don't know. Maybe he is. I'm not 100 sure. There's a lot of big name free agents still. I don't know what those contracts are going to look like. I hope Golden gets paid. But it feels like this was a conversation that was just like Golden's, you know, going to go chase a. Let's go get a. Hey, let's go get a Super Bowl. Yeah, to Tony's point about the Rams, I don't think Jalen Ramsey and Golden Tate have a very good oh, yeah. relationship. Oh yeah, they fought each other on the field because of yeah. Because of sisters. Yeah. Yeah. 
So probably Colts. Hey, here we go, Indy. You yeah, know, yeah, let's go. Aren't you surprised he listed the Rams? Yeah, well, that? I, I would. Uh, him and Stafford got to be tight. Yeah. I, th- I think him and uh, I think they have. I, uh, Some I'm not sure. Best years, I feel like, were with Stafford. Yeah, but I'm talking off the field, too. You oh, would, I would, yeah. you know, like the, uh, I, I don't know if they're tight or not. I, they feel like they are. I'm not, I don't know enough, but that whole grab, where was he at? Aspen? Whistler. Uh-huh. Whistler. 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 Yeah. Where he was standing on that table and he's wearing a loud, hilarious full snowsuit basically there's a party going on around him and he snags that beer out of the sky and then chugs oh. it and then throws it i'm like all right that's a guy i'd like on my team yeah, yeah. i'd like that guy on my team i think I, I i had to punt to him a couple times i think he was a nightmare he uh never fair caught it obviously would try to kill people i think he did fair catch it but you get it it always felt like he was gonna try to take advantage of everything he legend of a guy i hope he comes to indianapolis that'd be great news be a huge compliment for T.Y. Hill, and yeah. probably also another guy who could help Paris Campbell. Well, out. and how about Michael Pittman? I yeah, mean, of course. Well, Michael Pittman's in his own league yeah, right well, now. Well, not yet. Know? I mean, he's At going to. At least two touchdowns this year. Do you think? At I think least. so. I, if he – there was bursts where he looked like he was the fastest guy on the field and he was making great re- – I mean, it didn't produce a lot. Uh, six yards, uh-huh. okay, one touchdown last season. That's right. That's one of those things where it can only go up from here. He shoot. He, there was glimpses of greatness with him, and he's still got his number, by the way. So he's oh, just yeah. kind of getting yeah. comfortable in yeah. there. New quarterback comes in. They're getting on the same page. He got hurt. He's going to be good. But when you see some of these pairings that are going on for quarterbacks around the NFL, and we're in a very offensive-driven league, if you're a team that doesn't have one of those, you got to be a little bit worried, okay? you got to be a little bit worried. For instance, A.J. Green and DeAndre Hopkins have come out and started speaking about playing alongside of each other, and it is wild to think that those two are going to be on the same squad. I never played with a guy like D-Hop, says A.J. Green. The guy is unbelievable, man. He embraced me. We don't have egos. He's telling me, like, if you want to run a route and I'm at that position just let me know so you have a guy like that two guys like that in a room it's going to be unbelievable and feed off of each other and uh, he said that that offense he thinks is going to be unbelievable and obviously you have to say that if you're on a team or whatever but with the thought that Kyler Murray is coming into his third year that offense had just flashes of unbelievable. I mean, just yeah. moments that were, seems like the offense was damn near unstoppable. You had A.J. Green, who's been you know, kind of lost in Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. Okay, no offense to Cincinnati. Great city. Hey, great city. No indoor practice facility for the NFL team that makes billions. And billions of dollars. So you could think that they're maybe behind in the competitive edge against all the other 31 uh, other teams or whatever that do have that. But he's kind of got lost there. Turnover, coach turnover, quarterback turnover. He's an absolute stud whenever he's healthy. Can he stay healthy? Was he healthy and they weren't playing him and he wasn't playing because it was Cincinnati and they were so bad all the time? These are things we'll find out. James Connors over there. That team could be a team. Arizona could be a team. And by the way, when you talk about weapons, they're in the conversation, but there's a lot of teams at the top that have great weapons, and there's a lot of teams that don't. So I'd assume Golden Tate's a hot commodity right now. He should be. I would I would love to have Golden Tate on my team. He's like he's one of those guys like too. He's not scared to crack block dudes. Like he's walking downfield. I'm not saying cheap shots, but that dude plays through the whistle. Yeah, I respect him, man. I love what he does. But going back to AJ Green and and Hopkins, that's pretty rare for Hopkins, a guy like that, to come up to AJ Green. Hey, if there's a route you want to run, and I, you know I'm the X, and you want to be the Z, hey, you could take it. That doesn't happen. Huh? Yeah, that because especially if you're nuke, right? Because if it's a route that. AJ wants for that play, whatever the reason is. And maybe it's the second, you're the second option at that route instead of maybe the third if you want to move in one. Or if you become the first option with that route on a play. Nuke, by the way, has probably wanted those routes as well and gotten those routes everywhere he's ever been. Hey, okay, here's the play. Here's option one. Who are we going to put there? Oh, we're going to put DeAndre Hopkins there. Okay, cool. And now A.J. Green in that, that that relationship is going to be very vital to their success. Can they get along? And we all know like D Hop is hysterical. He he yeah. I mean he is a savage. He is very confident as he should be. He crushes as he does. And then he'll talk shit to people too and bury them. It's just that hard knocks scene 
with him and Dante uh, uh, Hall. Dante Hall, where Dante was just, I think Dante was trying to be as nice, like, hey, listen, if you do this, I won't be able to do this. And he's like, get the fuck off. Me. Yeah. Get, hey, you and me are the same, he said. You, you and me are on the same. And then, you know, it, like the next rep or something, Dante blew out his ankle or his knee yeah. on a route that, the, like, that is something that has to be remembered. And almost every wide receiver has that mindset because there's only so many balls to go around. There's only so many positions, so much money to be had in the NFL. So whenever people hear a wide receiver is demanding the ball or whatever, it's like, yeah, because their livelihood depends upon it. And in their eyes, they are open. So that's kind of, I don't want to say it's every wide receiver, but a lot of wide receivers have that trait like, hey, we got to get me the ball for a lot of reasons. We'll be better. It's a deep threat. It's a move, whatever it is. So for them to be on that type of same page and synergy, it feels like just trying to win at all costs. And they got Kyler that can make every throw. That makes them a fucking weapon. But, I mean, the, the Chiefs have the same damn thing. Mm -hmm. The Bucks have the same damn thing. And there are other teams that just don't, you know. And I feel like that is going to be the ultimate equalizer. Who's got the weapons when an injury comes that they can still feed, that they can still go, uh, and who? Who doesn't? I think that's going to be the game until it becomes defensive battles again. I think you got to have offense in bundles. You got to have a ton of depth too. But going to with AJ Green, I played with him for a year in Cincinnati. He's a, he's rare for a receiver to where he's a not a loud guy. Definitely not making any issues. Not going to have any problem. But ultra competitive in the game and loves making plays. But I was super impressed. He even said like, "There's no egos between he and Hopkins." Like, I believe it because I've been around AJ Green long enough. That dude is. I don't know. He how he runs, how he moves is so smooth. I hope he's healthy and feeling good because it it will be fun to watch those two together. What was it? He, yeah, and by the way, the reason why having more than one superstar wide receiver, and I hope why a lot of wide receivers are starting to very much understand this, and it might be a, a change in the game, knowing that there's gonna be a lot of passes, but also when people can't slide coverage towards you and you're a superstar. Like, that is such a gift to everybody on your team. Whenever they can't just have, whether it's a corner, inside ba or outside backer, and a safety potentially with eyes on you, like T.Y. has seen in coverage before with the Colts, and I assume A.J. Green got that as well in Cincinnati whenever he was the only weapon there for some time. And I... DeAndre Hopkins probably gets that on a regular basis. By the way, Travis Kelsey would get that. Yeah. Tyreek Hill would get that. Mike Evans would get that. Chris Godwin would get that. Gronk would get that. That is a game changer. That's a fucking, that's a complete game changer for Cliff Kingsbury, too, calling the offense where he can maybe get a little bit more creative with a little bit more openness, you know? Well, think of, think of those guys that you mentioned. He, the quarterback and those receivers know, hey, if I get one-on-one -on -one coverage, he's coming to me quarterback's like hey if it's one-on-one -on -one, if they're not helping they don't have guys they don't have a guy inside taking away the slant and somebody over the top hey get ready because it's coming do you remember that play where kyler murray looked out saw one-on-one -on -one with deandre hopkins and as he was getting the snap he was smiling you right they, they yep. it zoomed in it was really he saw that he was getting one-on-one -on -one coverage and he was like thank god that's potentially going to be every play because A.J. Green's there. Now James Conner, Chase Edmonds, obviously. James Conner brings a lot to that backfield. He does. They got, they got weapons over there. Ain't that right, Diggs? Two yards in a cloud of dust. Oh, oh, this guy. Tony. Don't listen to Tony. that guy. He is a jaded Steelers fan for whatever reason nobody knows. But I like that A.J. and uh, DeAndre are on the same page. And I like the fact that it feels like the game is becoming one of those ones where, like, hey, we're going to be moving the ball a lot. Let's go ahead and stack in the positions that we need. Guys are, I think guys are realizing that happiness in life and winning is maybe better than just getting the ultimate payday every single time. Feels like that's a potential shift. Their guys are going to get paid, but I think guys are also going to look at it like, okay, it looks like Tampa's probably going to go at least to the championship the next couple of years. I could take a little bit of a haircut to go down there and enjoy life and yeah, there's no, yeah. no taxes and then after that I can make money or maybe even off the field because we're gonna win so much like I can make money there too. Might be a change in the game we're seeing right in front of our eyes, AJ. You think? Well, I think it also goes to all the high level quarterback play. I know you're up against the break, but I think there's a very, very high level quarterback play throughout the league right now. I agree. There's people that can make throws and there's offensive minds that are getting creative and there's defenses still trying to catch up. So you got to take advantage and a strike. And quarterbacks are throwing for 9,000 yards a year too. Like there's so many balls to go around. And you got to strike while the iron is hot too because who knows when football is going to change. When is a defensive coordinator going to figure out how? Like, you know what I mean? It, 
There might be glimpses of like how to stop this modern offense, but somebody's gonna figure out some cloud coverage that is gonna have some sort of Isaiah Simmons and and that like a body like that, an athlete like that at different, pres somebody's gonna figure it out and it's gonna change the game again. And then when you do that, it's like, okay, how do we take advantage of this? Mm -hmm. It's just, that's the game I think. And right now, if you have weapons in a quarterback that can make plays and throw, you're gonna win. Mm -hmm. Tom Brady can make every throw and they got 10 weapons down there. And they got Bruce Arians and, um, uh, Byron Leftwich. Byron Leftwich, big ass brain down there, and Coach AQ Shipley on yep. staff. Yeah. And they got a hell of a defense. Clyde Christensen coaching, and the defense is good. You got to catch up to that, I think. Yep. All right, we got to take a break. We're back in four minutes, hour two. Hasn't been a complete waste, but I hope you've <laughs> entered into how many putts I tried this morning to make one. It is the number one trend on Twitter at the moment. Let's go! Sweden, Poland, we told you soccer stunk, but the thing about it is 15 and a half thousand tweets. We can't thank you enough. Let's continue to rock. We can't wait to give it away. We don't do it to trend. We actually do it because it's the easiest way to give away shit, but when you trend and everybody sees it, it's pretty fucking dope. So we, we can't act as if that isn't cool. Thank you all so much. Let's keep this thing going. Hour three on the other side. This is the Pat McAfee Show. Wrestling live in Indianapolis, Indiana. Tonight we have a straight to hell match in which the devil will battle against our office wrestler, Dylan Boston. You might be wondering how we got here. Let's find out right now. And now we have to make a deal with the devil. Yeah, no big deal. Classic trial by combat situation. We got our champion, Dylan Bostic. All he's got to do, win the match, one, two, three, and we're home safe. The only man that would take the job to protect us from the devil himself, Dylan Bostic. Like you mentioned, Pat, there's probably about five or six other guys we'd rather have in this position, but we'll take Bostic, I guess. Not only are all of our souls on the line, the Office Championship Wrestling Championship presented by Natural Light is also on the line. No, Jesus, the devil's no, trying to put I God in right to hell. hell. I do not want to Good go God, to hell. No. Don't do Good it. Good God, no. Come I on, Bostick, man. Oh, no. Oh, my. I'll see you in hell, Pat. The goddamn Easter Bunny's out here. What the hell's he doing here? The Easter Bunny is obviously here to help Dylan Bostick. Wait a minute. No! No, no! The Easter Bunny's been on the devil's side this whole time! Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! Jesus what the hell's Christ. Jesus Christ doing here? The power of Christ is compelling Dylan Bostick! Look at this, Pat! Jesus Christ is bringing Bostick back to life! Jesus is going insane! And now Bostick's kicking wholesale ass in the ring! Jesus Christ has come to help Dylan Bostick defeat the devil and defeat the Easter Bunny. What's going to happen here? Good God Almighty, it looks like he's going up in the scissor lift. Jesus is lifting the scissor lift. Jesus is now telling Bostick to come down. Don't do it, Bostick. Don't no. do it. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Oh. Bostick's dead. He's dead. You can't tell from home, but that scissor lift about eight stories up, Pat! 80 feet in the air! Oh, wait! He's tuning up the band! The devil! Super Jesus. kick! Oh, into the, the casket! Into the, the devil casket. goes down! Jesus. The devil goes down! He shuts the casket! Shut it down! The devil goes straight back to hell where he belongs! With the assist from Jesus Christ of Nazareth! Dylan Bostick saves the PMI office's souls and wins the OCW Championship right here on our first OCW Straight to Hell. Hey, listen, tonight, you in the red, you in the blue. I hate you both, and fuck you too. Before I leave here, I'm knocking all you out. Cheers. Oh, let's go! Let's go. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you.
You too. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Bang, and I'm out. Give me out. Every day is game day for these guys. It's showtime on the Pat McAfee Show. Not every, we're off next week and Friday. Oh yeah, <laughs> shit. Not every day. <laughs> Most days. Not every day is game day. <laughs> it's still game day. I took the hat off because I was getting a fucking rear naked choke on my uh, temples. The hat just too skinny for you? My head, too big. I think the move with those ones backwards. Yeah, and then I tried it, and then I gave a little look at me, and I was like, oh, that's the most insufferable guy I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't do that. So it's just kind of a tough spot. Remind me of, or remind, remind you, like when someone wears the, you're in a frat. Yeah, that's exactly. And by the way, speaking of frat, did you watch the College Bowl last night? Alabama, Auburn, Minnesota, Michigan, Peyton Manning, Cooper Manning? I did not, no. Pretty good show. Yeah. Hey, pretty good show. I, I'll tell you what. It, it was on last night. Alabama took on Auburn. Uh, it's a team of three. Uh, on each side, they square off. Peyton's the host, obviously, and it's real ass trivia. Hey, real trivia. Uh, hey, we're talking trivia, real questions. There's like a, a showdown, face off for both teams at the beginning. Once a, a category's been selected, whoever gets a buzzer quickest out of all six people who have a buzzer, uh, three on one side, three on the other, whoever gets it first, it is now their turn to get. Um, I think it's uh, extra point, maybe or bonus or something like that. Okay. I forget. And then you get like three bonus questions that if you get right you get more points if you get wrong the other team can steal but then you come back so you're trying to get as many and then there's this two minute drill at the end where it's the only thing that matters Peyton will ask a team Alabama uh series like 30 20 questions maybe 30 questions and these are real fucking questions from some uh whatever degree they chose to go so one was pre-med uh, one was history I forget what the other one Peyton has to read these questions and by the way, I don't know if Peyton did this strictly so people would stop potentially thinking he was just some dumb hick or whatever, because he has <laughs> these, these questions and these sentences that he has to read up against the clock where there is real pressure. Like I thought about, obviously, these college kids were very impressive. There were some dumb kids on the teams, I think, that were mm -hmm. kind of riding along. And I knew a lot of the answers sometimes in the middle of this thing. But he's reading very quickly. Cooper Manning chimes in with some comedy. I think it's a good show. I think it's a really good show. Very impressed that this is the style of show that Peyton was doing. But I was uh, incredibly impressed by what he was doing. What network? NBC. Yeah. Prime are, time. Are, Oh, really? It was primetime show? Yeah, it was primetime. Are it, these athletes or are these just students that attend the school? No, that made me think. The, the kid that was representing Alabama, his name was Alec. He was the frat guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was the frat guy, like what everybody thinks. But he was uh, he, he might be president someday, that guy. It sounds like it, it's like feud and jeopardy it, into it one. Was. Yeah, it was. <laughs> kind of feud and jeopardy into one. They have a little bit of a weird thing they're going to have to work through where when they go to after the team gets it right and they secure like the bonus questions on their side i don't you know they they have to huddle up together yeah. and then they ask the question and normally it was just one person that was doing all the answering so it kind of makes the other person look bad there has to be i think they'll figure out a way to do that and then in the two minute drill they made the team hit a button instead of just giving the answer and moving on. So there was a couple times where Peyton was mid-sentence during the two-minute drill saying something that was very large. They were hitting the button and saying the answer at the same time. You could only hear the tail end of their answer. And then you could tell Peyton, somebody was in the ear saying, good, yeah, good. So they have a couple things that they, I think it's great. I think this show is going to survive. Yeah. I think it's going to, I think it's a very, very good show. I enjoy, I enjoy good trivia though. Trivia is always good. You know what I mean? Do people move on? Like does the winning yes. school, they yes. keep going? There's a top eight, then there's two wild cards. Oh, what's they're... it called again? It's called uh... College Bowl. There Bingo. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I had it all the time. My throat was just so dry. I didn't uh -huh. want to give an answer. In the, hey, the it's on NBC, Celsius. though. What happens when Miniature Rock comes back? Is it bumped off the air? So Young Rock Come and on, College dude. Bowl will be on at different times. Okay, two legendary. That's a lot of firepower. You don't want them both in one night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Little Boulder's I, Monday, right? I would assume Peyton Manning read the coverage, you know, and said, listen, whenever Boulder's off... 
I'm gonna go on in the middle of summer when there's nothing else on except for hockey and the boats are just absolutely dominant. Yeah, no boats. And then there's NBA, which is uh, ends way late whenever the good games are happening or whatever. So I think it was a good play by Peyton. That show's gonna survive. If Peyton remains the host of that thing for like 20, 30 years, that'd be awesome too. The questions he was reading, I mean, there was some big ass, I mean, there was some, it was very impressive. And it didn't seem like there was any bobbles because everything was kind of timed. Because like when Steve Harvey's asking those questions in the, the fast money or whatever at the end, in or whatever the fuck it is, if he bobbles, that directly affects that family and the Big time time. and everything like that. And that's all I could think about during this two minute drill when Peyton was reading these questions. I'm like, these are kids in debt, probably a couple hundred thousand they're winning this and he's got to get this one or two questions difference between either team. I mean, it was... It was a good game. I was mightily impressed. Kids on the team get the money. Like yeah, scholarships. Between. I think they get scholarships. They okay. get their debts paid off or something like that. Because there was a couple that were graduates. There was a couple freshmen in there that were unbelievable. Oh, so it'll last for yeah, sure. Yeah, I think it's going to last. Yeah, for however long Sally May or whatever exists. I mean, that's like, uh, I, I think this one's going to be around. It was a good show. It was a good show. We're back with a bad show. Uh, hour three of it on the other side of this six minute break. AJ, what's that news you're going to break in the third hour that people yes. should listen for? I did see something uh, trending about a redneck rave where someone's throat was slit and somebody was impaled. So maybe we'll get to that in the third hour. We will not be talking <laughs> about impalements or slitting of throats in the next hour. We'll see you then. Let's talk about what happened directly outside of WrestleMania in the MetLife parking lot. And this guy tells Zeke, yeah, hey, just follow that car right down that way. If that awning was literally six inches lower, I'm dead. Hey, who the fuck told you guys to drive down there? So I get a text from Nick that says, uh, call me when you can. And I never get that type of text from Nick, right? Granted, it's unfortunate that, uh, you know, the boys, the Roadhawks didn't have their WrestleMania moment. We talked about it earlier. All of us felt like we were in, like, a trench in World War II. <laughs> yes. Tell you what, the WWF would be proud. That's, uh, that's a lot of fucking destruction. I thought the entire building was coming down. The best looking uprights I've ever seen in my life. Hey, who the fuck told you guys to drive underneath there? I will never forget April 7th. They said to come to the loading dock. Yeah, they want to set up a shot, so they're gonna come out with cameras and like show that we're like tailgating. The tailgate spot. Do a U turn? Is that what he's saying? I don't know. We're just doing a U turn. Wanna move up? And this guy tells Z, yeah, hey, just follow that car right down that way. And so we're thinking, okay, no problem. Back it up. So Z, Mosey's on down this way and just fucking. Did. Uh, you're supposed to come through this shot like right here. 
Yeah. You told me I'm. Yeah, right down this way here. Fuck. Come on, guys. Fucking A. I'll be looking out there. Oh, fuck. So what you just heard was oh. a RV that was clearly too tall for an awning that was hanging over. <laughs> And Zito was going so fast in that the entire <laughs> RV ended up under the awning. Yep. And it wasn't until they were all the way under that Zito said, oh, I think we're stuck. <laughs> <laughs> and at that moment, he puts it in reverse and rides back through all of it. And that's the, this, the piercing sound of metal oh. that you heard ripping through. Did it fuck everything up up there? The backside fucked too. How's it going, sir? Yeah. Yeah, I just keep fucking sending this through here. I just sending somebody out, just hang tight, all right? Did you check the top? It's yeah, it's destroyed. No, like the whole thing is. Oh, fuck. Like, they're gonna fucking send me fucking no, through somewhere. No, no, no. There's not you. You know, everything, everybody alright there? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Stay calm. Yeah, you're on, Stay calm, kid. They told you to go through. Join time. Suck it, please. I am on the bus with the rest of the WWE <laughs> roster driving by. There's two fire trucks, there's a cop, there's paramedics, there's quite a scene. Fucking A. How's it going, sir? Right. Oh, yeah, they sent me through, and I was just like, all right. Yeah. And we're just rolling by going into the, the fucking MetLife Stadium, and I get a Corey Graves. Is that your RV? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys hear about Max? These guys drove a fucking RV <laughs> into the arena. <laughs> Into the arena. That road to WrestleMania, man. Hey, I'll tell you what, that's the furthest I've ever seen any vehicle get underneath that fucking awning. Look, the, look at the ladder on the back of the RV, it's almost fucking off. The Pat McAfee Show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, sir. Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back to that show, Hour 3, with A.J. Hawk, the wow. Hammer Down Boys. And everybody else will begin immediately following this beat drop from Twine. You know, if everything's fine when you hear that. Twine. Oh, hell yeah. Hey, yeah. this show is maybe the worst we've ever done. And by that, <laughs> I mean me. Uh, this is 100% my fault. Got vacation on the brain. Also, focus so much on the giveaway. Yes. You know, and there's really, it's it's been tough. So I do apologize for those that are watching and listening today. But I want to let you know, this next 53 minutes on Sirius XM, oh, yeah. and then probably hour and something at YouTube.com forward slash The Pat McAfee Show is about to be the best sports show in the history of sports shows. I'm changing. All right, how are we doing it? Somehow. Yeah, how though? Who, 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 <laughs> we, any ideas? Yeah, or? AJ said he had massive oh, news yeah, to yeah, break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not the impale one. We said we won't talk about any of that. Big sports news that AJ Hawk wanted to talk about. Let's dive into it, AJ. We'll let you lead off here. This is going to be the greatest hour of sports. Go, Big go, hour go. talk. Come on, Come on AJ. AJ. AJ, you're up first here on this Wednesday, June 23rd. Oh, okay. What, do you, what did you say we needed to talk about here? Why, so why do you get upset with me when you throw it to me a lot of times with like 10 seconds before a hard out, and then you get mad at the content in which I present to you? And now you're going to do this again, and whenever I bring up, we, I know you're going to have an issue with So, like, my big issue here is every time I send it over to you, I'm like, all right, here we go. AJ's going to say, in the third hour, 
we're going to break down, insert something here that only A.J. Hawk, who is a Super Bowl champion. Yep. Wow. Yeah. A college football national champion. What? A man who was in the Kentucky Derby photos alongside the story in sports right now. What? Uh, maybe a breakdown of, of, of former teammates like A.J. Green coming out and talking about what? something like what? that. What? Like every time I think, you know what, I'm going to send it on over there. Here we go. And I, every, you know what, I'm doing it. For, it's selfish because I'm doing it for me. Because I, I, I hope that you're going to say something that is really going to be something for us to talk about on yeah. the other side. And for me, I'm like, oh, that's exciting. Like that. So I'm trying to, so it's really selfish for me. I'll stop doing that. I apologize. But when I do send it over, I never expect every single time, and this is like Joe Thomas who thought the Cleveland Browns team was going to win every single year, and they didn't, obviously, for his entire career. He bought it. Every time I send it over, I think that something like that's coming. Instead, it seems like every time, you want to talk about a guy get his goddamn throat slashed. Bullshit. What's that, down there in Memphis getting impaled? I did not expect that, so it's always like... You didn't let me tie it together. You didn't let me bring it together. The reason I mentioned that as a tease going into the third hour, this event, I guess, was down in Tennessee, got out of control, some violence happened. I'm hoping we know this is that, like, six-week break where a lot of NFL players get arrested because you give them some time off, they get in trouble... I'm just hoping that we didn't have any NFL players down there that got in trouble uh, or got hurt. Was this in Memphis? No, it was in Kentucky. Okay, geez. Because when you said down there in Tennessee, and yeah. I was like, oh, my God, if this was in Memphis, like the guy told Ty a year and a half yeah, ago, yeah, you will. like you go down and you'll get your throat slashed. That is crazy if that would have happened. It's in Kentucky, obviously. Still just as terrible, this whole thing. But I, let's hope no NFL players were a part of that. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's hope. I mean – an NFL guy was shot four times just two days ago. This nice. is a time where not everything is scripted. Not everything is planned. Not everything is scheduled. And by the way, he got he went to visit a family member, was just sitting in a car and something happened. That That's the type of thing that can happen uh, in this world. Don't want it to. You're right. And then uh, obviously the Uzi, Uzi thing and, and everything else, the... The free time is a tough time. I mean, that's hey, why. What's the league gonna? What is the league gonna do for real with Frank Clark and have like? No we idea. know Goodell is not messing that's around a lot of times when it comes probably. to suspensions or whatever he's gonna his punishment. Uh, COVID Cowboys said maybe a gun safety course and he's maybe they might as well have him be yeah. safe. If he's not, and if, You're right. who knows if he has a license or whatever, and can you even have a license in California? I don't know what the open carry law is. I don't. I assume it's tight. I, I, I don't. I don't know what the rules are for this entire thing, especially with Uzi's involved. I have no idea yeah. what the rules are for those. But I think I don't know. Roger Goodell seems to have been, as of late, you know, trying to listen to the players a little bit more. Now, the NFLPA and the NFL are always going to battle. Okay, the NFL and the NFLPA are always going to battle. But it feels like, doesn't it, that Roger Goodell is maybe I don't want to say he's you know maybe opened up a little bit more to the players. He, he may, as soon as the video uh, a request was made by Patrick Mahomes. Uh, I think Alvin Kamara was in there. Whenever the world was fighting everybody, uh, a lot of the players asked Roger Goodell to make a statement about everything. And he, by the way, the next day it was it was the next day he did. Now I don't know if people have said that he's held up to it, but it feels like he has potentially come around a little bit. So maybe he'll actually show, uh, not actually, but you get it, handle it in a situation like, hey, why? Just can you explain to me why first you feel like you need to have a fucking Uzi on you at all times? Like, can we talk about that? Let's have a little bit more as opposed to just can't have him in the league. By the way, can't have somebody riding around with an open Uzi in the back of their car representing the NFL. That's just not good business, obviously. That's not what the NFL is about. That's not what the NFL wants to be about. But reality is there are some people that are potentially in some situations that they could have never choose. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's a, a neighborhood they came from where something happened, or maybe there's an extortion attempt happening. Who knows? There's a chance that bad people are out there. I think that should be asked. And then obviously, you can't put that type of thing out and have the NFL be behind you. So there's going to have to be a punishment and all thing. But I hope we actually learn what the fuck's going on, you know, because that seems a little bit sketchy. Yeah. Well, after the, uh, I don't know if you were in the league yet, but when the rules changed and you couldn't, anyone, if you had like a gun in your car and you were on like oh, yeah. the team premises, you got in giant trouble. I don't know what the, what was the punishment, but I know that was like a big deal. That became a, a massive deal. I think there was a time there where drunk driving was a big deal. There was, a, it was after, uh, was it, who was it? Gilbert Arenas brought the guns in and was pointing them at guys in the locker room. Yeah. yeah for the that? gambling debt or whatever. That was with the Washington Wizards, right? Mm hmm. I wonder, okay, I think it's probably Boure. If I had to guess. Big old bet, too. Yeah, that's a big pot, I assume. I, I think <laughs> that was I think that was a big pot. Which, 
You know, you have heard stories about gambling debts potentially having to be threatened to be paid uh, out of people. But when it hits a, a professional locker room, obviously a lot of people go, wait, does that happen in our locker room? And I think the NFL was told by some people like, hey, there, there is some gambling that happens in the locker room. And although that happened in the NBA, I assume that's what happened because you're right. There was a full there was a they. Hey, remember the full, you had to go sit through some like three hour stuff. You remember those days? Like, there was league wide mandatory things like, all right, here we go. You gotta sit and we gotta learn obviously because at this point, some of you don't understand that you can't be terrible humans. Okay, so here's, here's a three hour mandatory. Every person in the building is gonna go through this demonstration. That's happened a few times now. And it's like, I, I think the NFL once for business purposes probably, and they'll say that they also, because they care about every player and everything like that, but mostly business purposes, they don't like this type of shit happening. And this time, by the way, is when a lot of it does happen. To your point, AJ, so bringing it all back to Kentucky, I'm not sure, and I hope no NFL player is involved with a throat slashing <laughs> and, an, and an impalement at a family gathering in Kentucky, but who knows what the fuck is gonna happen in the next couple of weeks, I guess. With the gun thing, I remember it changing because if your car was in the parking lot, like the team parking lot, it didn't matter if it was out, whatever. If someone walked by and saw it and snitched on you, you'd get in trouble. I, you know, in Green Bay, you drive to practice. So Who's I remember one time getting in a guy's car and he had a rifle in the back. He's like, oh, he's like, I forgot I had that in there. I went hunting yesterday. It was like it was on a Wednesday. I think he hunted on Tuesday. And so he had to make sure he got that thing under the seat. And I was like, you really think you'd get in trouble, man, if like one of the guys, he's like, if they told somebody in the league found out, yeah, I'd get in huge trouble. Well, you know, the rifle in the back for hunting, I think that is what? That's the main argument that is going on in full gun control, I think, right now, right? I use, these, I use this Uzi for uh, hunting yeah, deer. That's what like do you the mean? Full, that's the full <laughs> argument in the big world. Because since the Uzi did happen in the NFL, obviously now gun conversation has made its way into my timeline. And I'm always fascinated by it because I stay out of all this shit. I just kind of let the people that are all fully focused on that you know, get done yelling at each other and figure it out or whatever. Why? Well, they're not, they're not very, like, both sides, n neither side is very passionate about how they believe. No, oh, jeez. Yeah, hey, not that's, at all. that's why I don't fuck around in that <laughs> world. Get, yeah, jump on in there, man. That'll be fun. <laughs> no, I do not get into that. That is not my world, man. I, I'm like a hey. What do you think, Gump? What's it like in Canada, Gump? We don't have, gun there's no uh, guns allowed at all, AJ. Can't carry Nothing. one. Nope. How about uh, like Mounties? China. Mounties, yeah. They can have guns. Oh, yeah. Mounties are ready. All Because there's a couple countries that I don't even think the cops. No. China, I believe China and Japan. England. No, Remember it, England? They didn't. They weren't even carrying guns, I think. It's wild. That whole gun thing, there's no way that people thought in the right to bear arms decision that it would get to the world that it is now with the conversations. I mean, there is so much passion. And it feels like they have made zero ground either way. Nope. I feel like both sides have made zero ground, and I don't think it's ever gonna happen. And I'm only saying this because I only get to tap into this world every once in a while when it makes its way into the sports, and I just kind of go do like a little temperature check, like, oh, what's going on? Oh shit, still the same shit you guys have been doing. God, that's been like, what, 10 years? <laughs> yeah. When was the last time I, geez. It feels like that is the, the big- Hey, for Gump though, I, I'm, yeah. I'm curious with Gump, where he's from in Canada, I know it's giant. Like, or what are their views? Do you think Americans are crazy and that nobody should have guns? Like, what is it like up there? Do they think Americans are just it's the Wild West? It's the same thing. It's both sides. You know what I mean? Is right? it Inuit hunting bow and arrow? Like, how do they? Is it everything oh. bow and arrow hunting up there? Like, how do you? There's no hunting in Canada. There is hunting, but I don't know how it works. Like, if you have a license and a gun, it's just not like you can't carry a gun. You know okay, I mean? so you can't own a gun. Yeah, it's not gun you can have a license oh, and okay. a gun, okay, but yeah, you yeah, can't. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's not what we, that's yeah. not what I, I, I think AJ and I heard something different there, right? You you thought. Yeah, yeah. I thought you meant like nothing. N nobody can own a gun. There's great, great elk and moose hunting. Yeah. Right. Caribou. Well, that's what I'm saying. On. I feel like I seen the dead something in yeah. Canada. At some point, I'm like, did they, did they stab that thing with a knife like <laughs> it was Kentucky at that family party? That's unbelievable. Didn't you have a teammate who, when all this was going on, who like got rid of their guns or tossed them in a river or something? No, that was at the Rookie Symposium. <laughs> rookie Symposium. Oh. We got a full <laughs> speech from a former player who was, he was giving a speech to the guys who probably you know, could understand where he was coming from. And he was talking about how the gun that this former player gave a full speech. By the way, I still remember it to this day. So it was Worked. a pretty, you know, he said that when he had his gun, when he was in the NFL, with the money that he was paid, 
he automatically always thought everybody was trying to get him, so he, the gun made him much more anxious than he ever thought it would make him growing up, where he grew up where guns were a common thing. And he said he freed himself one day mentally from the gun when he threw it into a river or whatever, and he, he said that's what he thinks everybody should do in the room. And there was about 50 hands that went up because everybody had to out-hood everybody else, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? So the one guy had to say, one guy raised his hand on the, the far right side of the room he was like yeah you ain't minding your p's and q's though dog like something like that and then uh you know there was like an echo on the other side like yeah i ain't doing that <laughs> there was, it became like a fool and i was i was so pumped i mean why do you have to throw it in a river can you sell it to somebody i have no idea dude the, the delivery was <laughs> what did he do that makes me wonder what he did with that gun before he threw it in the river well obviously that was my first thought as well it's like oh clever convenient throw it in a river yeah, huh? I know people that throw guns in rivers it's usually <laughs> after they shoot somebody <laughs> that's what i thought and i think by the way a lot of people in the room were like oh did you that good move yeah, yeah it was it caused quite I was too a, anxious, way too anxious i didn't just kill somebody i'm just too anxious it caused quite a conversation in the room man it caused quite a conversation i i got in a couple of cars uh that were fully ready for anything there was uh there was one yeah. time we were driving and one of my favorite teammates of all time we were driving to a place and uh, he had picked me up obviously and he was like hey you want to yep all right here we go so we go and uh, I was the only white dude in about uh, probably five, six miles or whatever. It was awesome. And we showed up in a car that was out of a movie. I mean, it was fucking awesome. So then as we're pulling out, we stay at the place. Had a blast, by the way. Everybody's always so cool. With those. It was so much fun. Then we're leaving on the way out. And uh, he, he had, uh, Ooh, uh -huh. he had you know, uh, he hydraulics. had some hydraulics on there. And that we went up, and I was like, oh shit, I did not know that at the time. And that dislodged something on his side uh, of the ah. car. Okay, so a, a, a gun happened to pop out into view whenever I was like, oh shit. And I looked over, and I was like, hey, I think you, I think you lost something. And uh, he, he looked down, and he said, hey, you got one too. That's what he said. <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh my God. And I looked under the seat, I was like, Jesus. Where did I just go? What, what, where? He's uh, always, hey, not just when you hear bad. I mean, definitely more because you hear, but this is every day, man. This is just how I was basically, he was like, this is just how it goes almost. And it's those type of, uh, types of moments that I was, you know, I'm such a stupid idiot. And everybody's just like, I think, kind of fascinated by it. Like, hey, you want to come do this? And I just say yes to a lot of things. And I get along with most people. I think that. I got a chance to see some shit, which immediately makes me think whenever the Frank Clark thing happens, like, all right, why does he think he needs a new, that's my first thought. And my first thought is what, now, by the way, Frank might be running some shit too. We have no idea. Frank might be, you know, Frank might be moving. We have, yeah. That has happened in the NFL before. But my first thought is like, why does this guy feel like he has to have an Uzi on him? That should be a conversation first as well. So we can maybe find that out. And there might be no answer to that. And there might be no way to figure that out too. You never know, but those types of situations are fucking wild. But you're right, I do remember when it was a, hey, no more guns allowed on property. It's like, a lot of guys were like, yeah, all right, I gotta change my car, I guess, because I got, there's full compartments in this thing. There's full compartments in this thing for that. It was, it was a fun time to be alive, you know, and I'm just a fucking idiot just bebopping through it. But, you know, that's the type of thing you, you hope that everybody could experience and see. So then you can maybe be a little bit more you know, understanding of why some shit happens. Well, it used to be, I mean, it used to be much more wild than it, it is now or it was back in the, back 10 years ago, I'd say. I mean, I had coaches tell me like big stars that they played with like, oh yeah, man, we got all liquored up. We were driving home, we were racing. I hung out the window, I was shooting at signs in front of them. Like they're shooting guns, like in the, at, not at cars, but around cars, I guess. I'm like, oh, how'd that end up? You're like, I don't know, went home, went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> there is, you know, cause you gotta think, the humans that make it into the NFL have something different about them that has got them there. And there, a, lot of, a lot of guys are coming from the same potential neighborhoods and places that are creating these gangster rappers that people are hearing about their lives. It's like, hey, the, the guy that is potentially sacking a quarterback right now came up in the same exact area. Now, sports probably diverted them away from some of it and hopefully all of it you would hope that sports were able to be an opportunity of hope or whatever but it's like there are some things that 
they grew up in a different world than a lot of other people. It's just like there is, you know, just kind of levels to this whole thing, which I think is what the whole process of like. They're the a huge target, too, though. Their whole oh, salary, yeah. everything that they make is public knowledge. So they become a huge target like the second they get drafted. Really. And by the way, this is just like, you know, and this is this is a real thing. It's if you if you aren't representing for where you come from, then you're also a bad guy. Like you're a you're considered a bad guy. Like, yeah, you are. You and obviously I can't say what is said, but the the that like the way that it's a tough it is a tough thing to go from that type of environment to millions of dollars and trying to, you know, I don't want to say balance it, but do it right. I can't believe there isn't more guys that completely fuck it up. It feels like there's good, but when these moments pop up, it's a, it's an immediate reminder. Like, hey, there's a chance that there's a different life going on right now. Well, that's why it's so cool. And like Robert Mathis comes in here and he talks about being in high school classes with Gucci Mane, and it's like how <laughs> you know two people who you know of, but coming from the same place, you'd have no idea. Yeah, why? it's it's cool shit, man. Now, by the way, I think because of those types of relationships, I did see, I did get. Um, uh, what were those uh, old school music things that people used mixtapes? We used to get mixtapes earlier than everybody else in our locker rooms, which was Ooh. awesome. I we had a kid from Atlanta in our uh, in our college locker room, West Virginia. He got us Jeezy's mixtape before he went uh, big time. I, I've known Jeezy before he he became a mainstream guy. <laughs> yeah. And Jeezy and I have gotten through plenty of workout together where I was puking all over mm -hmm. the place. And Jeezy talked me back into life because of those relationships, though. I don't know if that guy made it to the NFL. Probably not. Who knows what he did with his West Virginia University uh, diploma. I assume he's doing something awesome. But, yeah, it's that type of shit that is why the football locker room is so good, though. You know? Yeah. And it's what we talk about. And that's why I think the Carl Nassib um announcement and everything is good because i think the locker room overall generally pretty welcoming pretty open the best conversation that carl's probably going to have which we won't be able to record they won't record but the questions that'll be asked in the conversation between carl and some of his teammates are going to be amazing i mean it's going to be absolutely amazing and i think this is ultimately a good thing but i think the football locker room is almost like built for this type of thing and maybe even evolving even more you know i, I think it's ready for it i'll be curious to hear i mean i don't know if carl would pay attention or whatever to see how he feels or he was treated before this announcement and after moving forward in the locker room on the field against opposing teams like what the experience is like i would imagine he gets a lot of support from everybody. He already has publicly, but I'm sure guys are going to reach out when they play him and and, and want to, you know, talk to him and, and tell him how they feel. That'd be such a cool convo to have. Like, hey, man, I'm so pumped for you. Yeah. But what, like, whenever we were, blah, what were you? You were, like, how, how do you be? How do you have something like like that inside that you're scared to tell everybody while still able to be a human enough? and a great enough football player, it's like that is a very interesting brain thing. It's I'm pumped for him. Pumped for the Raiders. Hopefully they win. Hey, listen, we talked about the, um, the uh, Arizona Cardinals in the first hour, and uh, I wanted to chat about the, the odds on who's going to win uh -huh. the division and everything like mm. that. We made a graphic. Dirty Gertie made a graphic for this drawn to the game. I'm very intrigued on what some future bets are that we can get. And when you talk about... The NFC West, right now the Niners, right? They are the favorites to win that, I think. Is that plus 185 or 195? 85. So they're plus 185. The Rams are plus 195. The Seahawks plus 270. The Cardinals plus 600 to win that. I think that's, you know, put some money on there. Why uh -huh. not? Who knows what's going to happen with the Seahawks and Russell Wilson and Pete Carroll. Hey, listen, they're still friends. Schneider popped his face into that whole thing. They weren't able to win enough last year. Will they be able to win enough this year after going through some shit in the offseason, allegedly? We will find out. The Rams, though, that team with that defense – uh, they got a new coordinator. They lose Staley, which is a big deal, by the way. Losing that guy, I think a lot of people are saying, is a massive deal. They got great players, but I think Staley was a great defensive coordinator before Wade Phillips. I think they'll find another one, of course. But on the offensive side, they're built as well. I like the Rams at plus 195, even though the Niners, I think, have the most full roster. What are your thoughts on that division, AJ, and who are we betting on? 
I mean, if it's plus six hundred for the Cardinals just to win the NFC West, yeah, why wouldn't you yes. put some money on mm-hmm. that? Like you, we we just talked about earlier the weapons they have. If Kyler can stay healthy, if JJ Watt can stay healthy, Chandler Jones is he going to report to camp? Do we know that yet? Isabella as well. I, and the Chandler Jones didn't Ooh. Ian Rappaport say he expected this? I think they hey, Chandler Jones they expected yeah, it to wanted, happen because I said, hey, this came out of nowhere, and maybe Ian was just flexing on me because he's Ian Rappaport, rap sheet and friends host. But he said, oh no, they kind of expected. I think was kind of the the gist of it because of the contract and how well he's done. But I think they're going to get that done. Let's assume he's a hell of a player. That team could be good with Buddha Baker as well. Mm-hmm. With the whole div- that whole division though, Pat. Look at the NFC West from top to bottom. Like it's a toss up. Who's going to win? Any one of those four teams, you could you could see a way that they win the division. And if you get plus six hundred on one of those teams, why not? Especially the Lions with- at plus twenty one hundred. Fox has got to throw some money down. <laughs> have to. Foxy, how do you feel about the Lions being uh, the third worst? Third worst. But hey, honestly, if you look at the other divisions, those teams that have bad odds do not have a chance. If Aaron doesn't come true. back, that division's wide open. Oh, I'm not kidding. Hey, Ty is not wow. here to true. lose his mind, but that is a real thing. Yeah, true. I don't trust the Vikings. I don't trust the Bears. And then ah. Aaron's gone. Packers, quite honestly, probably stick. How about MCDC? And M- MCDC coming in, we just wow. hand the ball off with golf every single time, and play a little defense every single time. <laughs> in that division. He's not sacking a handoff. I think that's what <laughs> uh, that is. What I've yeah. seen it happen. Uh, before Khalil, it yeah, you're right. You're right, back. especially with Khalil Mack. Yeah, you're right, 100 percent true. Um, but if, if Aaron does leave, I'm not getting into it. We're if Aaron talking, leaves, we're not, I'd like to see, we're not talking about. We're not talking about Aaron. I'd like to just see how those odds change, though. Like the drastically. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Very, very quickly. Vikings would be the favorite. Oh, yeah, hundred yeah, percent for sure. Vikings definitely. Everything will just kind of slot up. I and mean, what if they move Packers all the way down? Oh, Twenty five hundred. They wouldn't though, because the Packers still have a uh, you know weapons on offense, yeah. good weapons on offense, a defense that they've gotten better. So, but they don't become the clear favorite. I mean, they're minus one twenty five to win that thing, yeah. and, and I assume that's because Aaron Rodgers is the only reason why. Think about that. There's Packers fans that are upset. That Aaron Rodgers is potentially asking for a little bit more. Right now, people that make billions and going to be on the road to make trillions of dollars in this business say, since you have that guy that you guys are okay with uh, or not okay with acting a little different than everybody, we, minus 125 is what this is, actually. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and lose that guy. You're going to plus 400, 500 in this entire thing. Who knows what Jordan Love's going to do? Who knows what Blake will be able to do? Now, he, he is obviously an absolute stud, um, but God damn, that is a full title change in the NFC North. North and you plus 2100 let's put some money on it right now call me crazy i'm putting money on it today for sure you're right now i didn't know those odds were that good and that's only minus 125 because there's a thought rogers won't be there like if it if rogers was guaranteed there it'd be closer to what the bucks are to win their division minus 195 yeah. this is insane hey hey is your friend gonna go back or not and i promised me that I wouldn't talk about because they're doing the same conversation and the same thoughts that we're having <laughs> off air for all these other shows. And Aaron is still being talked about everywhere else. And I'm getting sick of it. I'm getting sick of talking about it. I'm getting sick of hearing from Packers fans yelling at me for talking about it. It's like, hey, listen, we have to talk about it because it's something that is happening in the world that we cover. I apologize that this happens to be negative Packers coverage from this show potentially for the first time ever. Mm-hmm. By the, uh, <laughs> we talk about the Packers more than anybody. It just it so happens to be a situation that hasn't been ideal for you i guess but what's he gonna do aj last thing before we go to a break today the the last time we talk about aaron what do you think he's gonna do i honestly i don't know what he's gonna do i i speaking with him recently i know all that he is doing right now he's grinding getting ready for the match another thing he said he's gonna he's playing all week trying to get ready that's all i know football way football i have no idea golf he's trying to win the match he's been training what's he been doing he's been at the range he's been putting he's been working on a short game because tom's barry I knew he hadn't played a whole lot of golf leading up to this, so that's what I was asking. Like, man, what are you gonna? Are you you've been playing? What's going on? And he said, "I'm grinding all week," and he thinks, "I guess he can put it together in one week, seven days." It takes you thirty-one years. He thinks he can do it in five, six, seven days. So he's let's Aaron see Rogers. how it turns out. He's Aaron Rodgers, though. I mean, so he's back in Green Bay. So is he golfing at that Green Bay Country Club? Huh. That's a nice country club, but I do not. I have no idea where he is playing, where, this, where these grind sessions are happening. But I assume it's not in Green Bay. If he was in Green Bay, I, his plane would have been tracked, and there would have been. There's probably people sitting at that 
Why would he be in Green Bay right now? Wait. There's nothing. There's no offseason. Well, you just say you well, were talking about him golfing. You're grinding away. There was a story that he just renewed his. It was, I'm sure it was auto renewal. Just we like agree. You. I, I'm just, I know we agree with that. I was just trying to potentially piece something together there that was maybe not there. You you settled that. Congratulations. But <laughs> you, it was you. an auto renewal situation, is what we just cleared mm-hmm. up, which is what we no, thought. I don't. I don't know that. I would assume. Oh. Oh, see. So oh, now here we go. now we're kind oh, of off know. the story a little bit. But whatever the case, you do that once, so you can golf that day. You need to golf and then. And they just they charge you for at least two or three more. Usually, years. usually not how it plays out, but for you, yes. Well, and for Aaron, and and it seems like that that is the case. He's a good golfer, right? Yeah, he's definitely a good golfer. I didn't get to see him. He never. We didn't golf together down at the Baja Mar. No. Damn. I see, and he didn't even hit in the uh, trick shot one because he was commentated. So I didn't. Even, I don't uh-huh. even think I seen him hit a ball. I think he's good though, right? Good golfer. Yeah, he can play. Well, his physique is going to be the talk of the town, yeah. whether he looks like he's in football shape or not. Well, he said last year he's not even going to start throwing until July. Are we there yet? We're close. We'll be I mean, Ju- it's- July 6th, we will be. Yeah, we'll see him. So that'll be his first couple. Is he going to throw on the course? Or are they going to have a session? Ooh, what time probably. are they teeing off? Maybe he and Tom. You think he and Tom are going to get an early morning sesh throwing to uh, maybe Bryson and Phil? They're going to run routes be for him? Smart. So there was a um, – there was that'd a, be sweet. That Phil, would be awesome. Phil thing. loves throwing. Yeah. Throw some throw, or show some like grainy footage. Hey, we got hidden camera footage of Aaron and Tom throwing to Bryson and Phil this morning. That's how dedicated they are the morning of the match. And we have Bryson running button hooks and Aaron just hitting them right in the numbers. Boom, bang, right in the chest. Hey, Brooksy. Okay, the, <laughs> the whole thing happens, you know, and Brooksy's at the 10. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, the uh the whole thing happens with him him throwing there, him saying he wasn't going to throw until July. Is that a normal thing, you think? And it, it, what does that mean? Is that his normal offseason? Because last year he said his elbow felt better and his arm felt better than it ever did. And it was that OTA delayed build up into training camp as opposed to build up, crash six weeks, and then back up to all the way at max work ethic with the training camp day one being full go, basically. what is it normally like that in the offseason? He tries to kind of rest the arm, chill, and, and he has that much confidence he doesn't have to do it because I think that was the inside joke you and him had basically. Well, was he of- saying though that he didn't tell us when he was coming on during the season that he's going to not throw until July because at that point he was still going to go to OTAs and stuff, right? I don't know because I think you guys had an inside joke that you no, did I, live no, I on the air. Had- I don't think we had an inside joke yeah, going on. About yeah, it, you did. You said, yeah, you, did. Um, you said you said you said I know how much you love throwing around on the beach or in the off season or whatever. No, I, mean, I meant putting putting voluntary workouts up there and trying to get pub for it. That was the joke. Oh, so like, is, has uh, he been throwing then? Oh, I have no idea if he's been throwing. He, I think he said when he doesn't throw is when the season ends up until they start the offseason program. That's when he rests his arm a lot, I think. Okay, so he is throwing then. Now, who's he throwing to? I is is that what Mai Tai's there for? Oh. oh. He works out out there at that place that Takatari works out and a lot of those guys in, in like Malibu area, area, I believe, or not Malibu, you know, somewhere up the hill. You know, all anybody's going to ask is if he's too skinny or whatever. Last year he started doing legs heavy, right? Two years ago uh-huh. he started doing legs heavy. Squats. I think all you should be looking at is the base. If yep. his base, yeah. I think I think that is all we should be uh, – I, I think you learn a lot, by the way. You can learn a lot quickly about how hard somebody's going whenever you, you know, see the legs out there, especially with how much – what was it? Iron? Iron. Par, par, iron. Iron. Iron clad or something? I think something. it was par iron. Pa, par iron? Par <laughs> iron. Par iron. It was par iron he was pushing. Par He's out of Iowa. Iron. Was that what it was? Par iron? This is the fitness people. Oh, yeah. here we go. Oh. Hey, here's a chance. Oh. You don't know. What was here the company? Go. I'm I'm not a fitness person, but I do not remember what the. Oh, oh, you are. Yeah, you are. You use it every That's day. That's all that matters, man. What's that? That's all that matters. He said he's jacking weight up. That's all that matters. Just getting the work in. Okay, oh. so he is doing that right now. He's jacking weight up. I don't know. Why are you asking you me, man? Because you said you talked to him. <laughs> yeah. Okay. About the match. About golf. Are his arms tired for like mine from doing so many fucking hammer curls <laughs> yesterday? And is he still able to swing? Or what do you think? How's he feel? I, I don't. So I don't know this for a fact, but. I am sure if we showed him that video and we did, I told him about the build up and Pat's gonna do curls. How many can he do? He would be equally as upset that you did hammer curls and oh. you did not let people know. He should come on tomorrow. Okay, okay so let's talk, about, talk it. about it. Tell him so, let's talk yeah. about it. Yeah, he does bar let's curls. Talk about it. Maybe he's Send in Jay clip. Glazer's gym. Hey, who did he pick up and drop the other day? Oh. Jay Glazer posted something. Lane oh, Johnson. Right? Jay Glazer was on a oh. mat and he shot on somebody. Got a single leg lift, scoop, did carry, he? drop. Yeah, come on, dude. 
Come on, Someone dude. send me that, please. I thought it was lame. It's on his Instagram. You're over there. You're an influencer. <clears throat> He's quick. Hey, he is quick. Yeah. Who, wait, who did he dump? Like an uh, NFL player? No, it was a professional fighter, I think. Oh. I forget who it was. I didn't see who it was because the at was not like the name. You know, it was like a... Uh, it says X... C N A snap like Natch. See, that's what I'm talking about. I don't know. I know it's somebody yeah. though because you know, it's probably John Jones. No, I would Randy know. Couture. It's Randy oh, Couture. Yeah. No. That's Randy Couture. No, Randy Couture. Holy shit! No. Yeah, he picked up Randy Couture, dude. <laughs> Damn. Jay Glazer, bro. Is Jay getting in the fighting game? Is he gonna fight somebody? What do you mean in the fighting game? He's been training MMA for, for like years. Yeah, no, Jay Jay is is gonna be, he's bro. gonna jump on, and maybe fight on a Logan Paul undercard or something. That would be undercard. He's the main event. Hey, Glazer Ocho Cinco. You're right. Um, there he is. Oh, uh, is that the end of it? Yeah, Ooh, that slipped the, the punch. That was the end of it. Go back to the beginning. Maybe he's in the next. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at that. You see him shoot? Tackle, wow. dump. That's an Randy awesome happy birthday post to your buddy. Lightweight. Yeah, absolutely it is. It's, hey, look, look what I did. Let you down. You're welcome. Cook. I'll kill you next time. <laughs> I'll kill you next time. I think he has mitts on, too, by the way. I think, oh, he, yeah. I think he has mitts. So oh, I think, yeah. oh, no. Is he? Those are like MMA gloves. They're, I think they're like the Pride gloves, or the, they're not the uh, UFC ones. Are they fighting each other? Is, is Jake Glazer just fighting Randy Couture on a fucking Tuesday, dude? Look, get there, white white on the Hashtag J. Oh, no. By the way, geez, hashtag J. Don't fuck around. He's fighting Randy Couture on a Tuesday. All right? <laughs> Take it easy in his mentions whenever you can start going out. Ty Schmidt needs to rethink everything at this Be careful out there, Ty. This is awesome. All right, we're back in four minutes. Shout out Jake Glazer. We love you, dude. Hi, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll take phone calls on the other side, wrap up this uh, probably worst show we've ever had. This is the <laughs> Pat McAfee Show. See you then. I don't care how good the form is. You get it. This thing moves from this area to up in this area. That's one. You can do prices if you want. <laughs> <laughs> now, do those two count? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, those two count. All right, here we go. Three, four. Near 70 or 80? What do you think? I would guess near 80. I can pump out another 20, right? All right, so I guess I'm near 80 too, right? I would say near 80. run that back to get the actual count, but that's how we got the number. So I hope you won, man. Hope you won one of the TVs or $25,000. I mean, they're burning a little bit. They're burning a little bit.
Maybe they'll give me a big hug beforehand, too. So that's true, sir. Thank you so much, Shane. You drinking? Yeah. Cheers to you, man. That was a good one. That was good. <laughs> that was good. I feel like it was pretty good. Oh, look at the phones. <laughs>
about how he's outworking everybody. Mm -hmm. And it was at Dak's camp. I know Dak's right there. Dak, it was at Dak's <laughs> camp. Dak was just coming back from a broken leg. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Jamie said, I'm outworking every other quarterback there is. Dak, I know you're right there. This is your camp. But I'm working out. I'm outworking everybody. That's kind of Jameis's thing. I, and I like that the public has gotten a chance to see it now because I'm going to start doing that. Uh, I might try to get in this IFL quarterback. You know what I mean? Yeah, you should you do one of those. I feel like you'd be a starter. Please recreate no time. Please recreate that. I would fall. Zeke, Zeke can wear the mitts. He'll be the one trying to strip the ball. <laughs> I would fall, and I would drop the ball, by the way. Yeah, Taysom Maybe. Hill is probably so. shaking in his boots now after seeing this. Uh, but but I, I will. How about whenever he had that thing swinging at his head? Yeah. Like, who was it? David Carr called him out. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. David he posted Carr. a clip right yeah, below David. it of it yeah, actually let's, happening. Let's go to Crod in Syracuse. What's going on, Crod? This is a human's name, Crod. Sure, it's not a typo. Crod. 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 You're on mute. Crod. What's that short for? You think? Crodrick. I think I hear him right here. Yeah. Crod. Crod, you're on, I think. No, that's Okay. Okay, Good run, Crod. Crod. Thanks, Crod. Thanks, Jay. That guy stunk. That's the worst call we've ever had. Yeah, where is he calling from? Oh. Syracuse. Dude. Crod Dumb City. Isn't Syracuse like journalism school? Yeah. 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 Shouldn't it just be osmosis, radiate through everybody? Hey, call into a show. Let's not fuck it up. Let's be here. good, yeah. What's that all about, Crod? What do you, what do you think is Crod's problem, AJ? I don't know. Syracuse doesn't have as much credibility now, does it? No, it definitely no, it doesn't. doesn't. No. My, where, Michael Cole went there, right? Oh, Michael geez. Cole, Tariqa, same school Everybody as went there. <sighs> yeah, I th by the way, I think Tariko and Cole potential classmates. Really? I think so. Same time? Really? I'm not hearing so. I, I think, think so. they could switch roles? I bet they could switch roles and they'd both be great. I think Michael Cole could go call whatever. Yeah. I don't think Mike Tarico could come call <laughs> WWE. What if, what if you find out that he's been a big wrestling fan for the last 30 years? Then do you think he could do it? If he, yeah. But the reason why Tariko is so good in the things that he's in, because it feels like he has a wealth of knowledge and confidence and comfort with everything he's talking about. So his transitions, he's, his convos that he have, are, you know, he's good. He's unbelievable. And I think we're going to get him on Sunday Night Football soon if the Al Michaels to Amazon thing is potentially going to happen publicly, which has already been stated. That means Tariko is probably getting Sunday Night Football. And is that going to be alongside Drew Brees? Oh! Is that going to be alongside old Drew Brees up there? So I'm happy that we're getting Mike Tariko back in the NFL, by the way. He is unbelievable calling stuff. WWE is a different animal, though. You know, I, I think Michael Cole could go over to the NFL, though, because he's a big fan. I think he'd go over to baseball because he's a big fan. I'm not sure... The fanhood of WWE is on the other side as much as Michael Cole has. The, Michael Cole has all the knowledge in something that maybe the other broadcasters aren't fans of. Uh, so that's like a massive weapon. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess. I, yeah. I mean, you, you have to, like I've told you a million times in the show, like, you have to be a fan of wrestling to have that gig, to do anything when it comes to commentary and it comes to wrestling. It can't be like, oh, but what do we have this week? Let me study up on the matches coming up. It can't be like that. Yeah, Jimmy Smith's doing great, by the way, over there on Raw. That I wouldn't be able to do what he's doing. I just want to let everybody know that. Oh, Jimmy Smith ain't a quarter. Uh -huh. he, Eminem said that. Let's go to Cole in Wyoming. <laughs> What's going on? That's what he said. What's up, Pat, AJ, and the boys? How's it going? Cole, great to hear from you. Honestly, I thought our phones were broken with the crowd situation. It's great to hear from Wyoming. Probably a better service than AJ has on a normal basis. What do you want to talk about? Wyoming did. Hey, I want to I want to get your thoughts on. I think the University of Wyoming should be a hot spot for recruiting kickers because of the altitude. Oh, is it indoor too? I think you guys play indoor, right? No, it's outdoor, but seventy-two twenty feet, two thousand feet higher than Denver. Wow! Oh, that ball flies, huh? But it, it might make an average kicker look like a better kicker. Yeah, that happens on a regular basis. Cole, thank you, brother. There's some schools. I think there are some schools around. I'm not going to say the school's names because people then think I'm calling out individual people. I'm just calling out situations. There are some places, though, that have pretty good altitude, and the ball seems to travel a lot further. And then you come back down to earth with an NFL ball, and everything changes. You know, there's a, there's a little bit different. I would love to get up to 7,000 feet, though, and kick the fuck out of a ball. So I want to hit a drive up there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to hit, I want to hit a baseball up there. See, uh, throw a football, throw, maybe? Throw a football yeah. up there? Yeah, we should go do all those things in Wyoming. Now we know. Now we know. Is that why Kanye went over there to throw a football yeah. far? Yeah. <laughs> That's why I, I, bet, I bet he can launch it. Kanye? Yeah. Yeah, he's got a go. Yeah. He would look at the football and he would say, we should take this off and this off, change the shape of it. It'll fly further. Watch this. It's, it's, like, 
No, 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 no. Whoa. Kanye Tony. has changed how shoes are designed completely. Hell yeah. Every single year he does, by the mm -hmm. way. Yeah, they're Shoe terrible, though. Thank you, Kanye. Whoa. Jeez. What the hell? DJ. I understand, like, the, the, the aura that surrounds them, but, man, I just cannot get into them. <laughs> what, what, the sandals I saw, like the croc looking deals? Hell yeah. Hey, listen, don't talk bad about the Crocs or the Bird Dogs Clogs. They are loved around this office. Mm -hmm. Not me. Hey, not me. Okay, and Coach A.Q. Shipley has been on the Crocs train since day one. He wore those into everything we ever did. And I'm like, why are you wearing these things? He said they're the best of all time. They're the best of all time. They're the best of all time. I couldn't find a time to put the best of all time on my feet and walk out of wherever I was all by myself. I couldn't do it. A lot of people have though, and they say they are amazing yeah. to wear. And I assume the Yeezys are the same, pal. I'll assume the Yeezys are amazing as well. Yeah, I would hope the Yeezys are very comfortable. I mean, that would be definitely something they have going for them. Other, like the price tag's crazy, right? 250 or something like that. He wanted them to be Come 40 on. bucks or 20 bucks or something like that. He said that on Rogan. And uh, they, they, uh, whoever, Adidas, Adidas, made them charge more because yeah. they're Yeezys or whatever. Pump Secondary market, those stuff. things are worth Thousands. so much money. Yeah, they appreciate whenever you buy. I mean, whether it's the shoes, his clothes, no matter what. NFTs. The, the, the clothes do? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everything. NFTs, good investments. Okay, everybody's assuming that's going to... That's going to continue to make money. It's kind of the world. Uh, obviously, the Bitcoin and everything, it's kind of been a wild uh -oh. ride. It's kind of been a wild ride for the Bitcoins. But the, the generation, the shoes are also in it. That's an investment business idea. When you wear it, you're also thinking as an entrepreneur potentially as well. So it's all a part of... What? The vibe of it. Oh. Yeah, people are selling shoes for a lot of money, dude. No, yeah, I know. I know the old sneakerhead game, all that stuff. Everyone will wait in line online to, to get things from all these different apps and sites. But you're telling me if someone buys some of these expensive, nice shoes, then they all, all of a sudden, these are oh, brutal. Those are but you sick, think that they dude. are. They think they're, they turn into entrepreneurs. They turn into Gary V. Yeah. yeah. Listen. Mid, mid. Yes, actually, the people that are wearing these shoes that are very expensive. He's trolling us. He's got to be trolling us with these. Okay. Phones. Listen. Oh, let me comfy. teach you the game a little bit here, though. The people that are wearing the shoes are just flexing that they have the shoes. Yeah. Everybody else that is trying to get these shoes is trying to get these shoes so they can flip them and sell them to the people that want to flex with these shoes on. There's bots involved. There's inside sources at Nike involved. Yeah. There is millions upon millions and millions of dollars being made by people that are either able to get bots at the top of this thing or they're able to somehow slip through the algorithm code and get a sneaker that's dropped so they can sell it on a secondary market. Oh, yeah, and the Yeezys are definitely in that whole world for sure. Yeah, it's a big business thing. I mean, yeah, I would, I, I'm all for that. I would buy them up and try to sell them to, to some guys that want to show, think they're cool by wearing some <laughs> whatever those Croc-looking situations are. How much are those? I have, no, um, I have no idea, but secondary market, whenever those, bucks. whenever the 600, is that real? The, uh, those white ones, 265. And whenever those are sold out, by the way, on the secondary market, and then again on the third market, that's only going to go through the roof even more. Yeah. It's like a collector car, you know, like people have collectible cars and they'll drive them every once in a while or whatever. That's what people do with all these incredible shoes. Like it only only been worn twice or something like that. Like that is a part of the entire description of the shoes whenever they're being sold. Only got 75 steps in these, yeah, uh, you know. It's like a car, dude. It's like investing in a car. And Kanye's car is like the Tesla, I think. Let's <laughs> yeah. go to- The let's upsell is $700, by the way. Yeah, already. By yeah, the way, that's insane. That's already that's not even like a year removed. Whenever they're impossible <laughs> to find time. or anything like that, let's go to Evan in Ohio. What's going on, OH? Oh, hey, what's up? Oh yeah! yeah. Woo! 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 Evan! Hey, I just wanted to expand on the legend of Coach Schlegel down there in Jacksonville. Had the opportunity to meet him a few years back, and he kills hogs in Texas with his bare hands. Can AJ either confirm or deny that story? Just quick, hold on. Can I follow up here? Did you go to the cult clinic thing on that boat? Uh, that's where you talked to Anthony Schlegel? I am a alumni of the Ohio State University, but I was not in Florida. Oh, wait, wait, but a couple years ago when you heard Schlegel do this, were you on a boat in the Caribbean somewhere with the rest of the cult whenever he told you this story? That was at a hunting preserve not far from AJ's hometown. Okay, Evan, we appreciate that. So Schlegel's oh, yeah. out on a hunting preserve telling old hunting stories about how he what? Slashed the throat of a hog? What, what is this guy doing out there? Well, no, he's, he's from Texas. He actually auctioned off multiple hunting trips where people paid a bunch of money to go down to Texas with him. He has his dogs. The dogs 
you know, they, they walk through. There's, Bay those dogs. Hogs are, those feral hogs, are they're a problem down there. They yep. can't kill them fast enough. But dogs corner them. Schlegs auctions off for his buddies to come in. They, they jump. They stab this thing to death. They take it home. They either feed it to the homeless or they eat it themselves. He doesn't use guns for it. Yeah, they, you, gun laws, you know, they want to get You should see the pictures, man. There's so many guys that go yeah. on the cruise with pictures. That uh, are like, hey, we bought this package oh, last year, and look Lord, at this. They show the pictures and all We so bought bad. this package. <laughs> Yeah. You have any pent up frustrations? That <laughs> you want to go out into the middle of fucking nowhere and just stab something and then take the? I mean, that's a wild time. I'm happy people do it. It's good for charity. And I do know I went hogging, by the way, down in Louisiana. The hogs are a real problem for farmland, for he- like everything. The hogs are like rats almost. They down reproduce there. so fast. Yeah. yeah, they can't keep up. Yeah, so that is something that people do. I whenever I went hogging. Tot hog tie. Oh, okay. And then it was given to somebody else for maybe a hog roast, a charity. They they did the whole thing. The hog, hog tie. Well, they they shot him though, right? No, we <laughs> hog tied it, put it in the back of a truck. Oh, the real hogs, you can't like the, they're scary. I mean, they got n- nasty teeth and everything. They'll get you. I just want to let you know, that's what I do. Okay, I go out into the meat of it so I can say that I did said thing. You know, it was dangerous. I jumped out of a plane, too. What are we doing? I did it so I could say that. I did. Jumped off the top of a steel cage, you know, just to say I could do it. This particular thing, bay dogs are sent out. They have uh, sensors or radars on them that are being tracked. They find a hog somewhere in the woods. Then all of a sudden, the pit bulls are then released. Uh, the pit bulls find the bay dogs, which have the hog at bay. Pit bulls come, tackle hog. Humans sprint behind pit bull, jump on hog tie get pitbull off hog hog still alive pick up walked out threw in back a truck taken out it was insanity yeah it was absolutely insane taken out to where uh i have no idea i did not it was to kill it was definitely taken out somewhere and killed but there was not a killing live in the premise where I was there. You didn't stab it 1,500 times like Adrian <laughs> no. Schlegel. No, no, I didn't do that. I, didn't, I have never been on one of those hunts with Schlegel. But sure. By the way, why not? these dogs are fucking... Hey, these pit bulls, I saw... <laughs> over like a creek onto this. It was Damn. in... They love biting the shit out of the ears <laughs> of that hog. Uh, there'll be a better show, I assume, in six minutes. Chris Mad Dog <laughs> Russo. Hey. See you tomorrow. All right, we're out. <laughs> I completely forgot. That was wild. Same day I went hogging and frogging in Louisiana. So in the morning we went hogging and uh, I was only part of like two catches. I was like, I think I've seen enough here. You know what I mean? Good it, was, it was a little swampy too. And down there in Louisiana, I was like, I'm not running through a swamp yeah, down here. Okay? I don't know what you guys have or, or raised with and maybe something's put on your skin that I don't have. But I know I'm not supposed to be running around a goddamn swamp trying to do something. There's gators, I think, in that whole thing and snakes and everything. I'm like, get me out of here. You know, there was land, but there was also some swampy land. Uh, But so we got we got two hogs. Pretty cool. Pretty cool being a part of that, tackling that thing, doing the Jared Allen. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like doing the full thing on the uh, knee and on the back. It was awesome. All right. Felt alive, felt exhilarated, checked it off the box, did that. Then at night we went frogging, boats on the swamp, and you see the eyes of the gator, by the way, as you're going through there. It's pitch black. And then you you flash uh like a spotlight or whatever, and a bullfrog that's on the side of the swamp freezes and you grab it like such right here hey rest in peace jared we appreciate the hell out of you pal you grab it then you pull it and then you put it in a uh like an american gladiator cylinder Mm -hmm. right behind you what yeah yeah so you're reaching your hand out into the swamp basically the edge of the swamp grabbing the bullfrog and putting it into a gladiator cylinder after popping it with a beam yeah it's crazy eat them or do you just collect them? once again I put them in the American Gladiator cylinder. Yeah. I do believe that cylinder was then taken somewhere, and they were murdered immediately Good and Lord. turned into frog legs, which they said tastes exactly like chicken or whatever. I didn't eat any of them either, but I did do a couple whoosh, grabs. I got pretty good. There, the first time I went in there, bang, pow, whoosh, slips out of hand. Oh, Ooh, flying bullfrog. Oh, no. Okay, hits edge of boat, go try to get, gone. Gone, yeah. Gone. I know they're peeing and pooping the whole time, too. Yeah. Actually, I think they, they, their whole body just freezes. Paralyzed. Yeah, because they try to like hide, I think. They can't see me. They can't see me. <laughs> but as soon as you get out there, like it wakes up real quick. You know what I mean? This is the same trip that you were going catfishing or whatever? And yeah, then, uh... one got a catfish out of a lake as well. Oh, noodling. Okay, yeah, I went noodling one time. Have you ever done that, AJ? 
No, but you wore a glove, didn't you? I, d I did, yeah. <laughs> but the, the thing about the glove is, and you know, I was judged mightily by these 16-year-olds all the way up to, I think there was a 15-year-old all the way up to like a, a 27, 28-year-old family that I went out there with. And they had all these spots. They're in jeans, by the way, shirtless. And they're going into the lake here Jeez. on a boat. I mean, it was legendary crew. We're talking full, I think there was three potential uh, dip tin circles yeah. in the back nice. of this one guy's jeans that I was going in there for. It was in South Carolina. And uh, we go out there. And uh, I was like, what's it going to be like or whatever? Like, uh, they don't have teeth, but it's real rough. The hand, the, the mouth is like sandpaper or whatever. I was like, okay, I need my hands, though. Like, I, my hands, like, I actually need my hands. You can wear a glove or whatever. And I was like, okay, cool, I'll wear a glove. And they had to, it was a whole scene. They went into, like, they went underneath something. You know, like, it was like, a, do yeah, it was like a brand new glove. Yeah. Like, I had to open the bag. You're like, here you go. I'm like, thank you. You know, like, by the way, I've been through enough you're not gonna this is not a peer pressure okay I, <laughs> yeah. i'm still gonna do this okay i need these hands i understand how you feel about it we live different lives though okay and i appreciate it we go out into this lake and it was i don't know maybe seven thousand degrees <laughs> and i didn't i put sunscreen on my face and i put sunscreen on my arms Smart. you know and i put sunscreen on like the back of my head and the back of my ears and everything that's 50 i think I think I put like wow. 50. I'm like, I was really looking out for me. Yeah. I felt like a fucking adult, you know? What I didn't realize is when you're catfishing, though, you're we were in the shorter, uh, the lower part of the lake towards the edge because they embed the holes in the side of the lake where we were. I don't know if that's what it's always like. The catfish kind of live in these holes. And I think all these holes are kind of made long before the catfish moves in there because there's like a, a big hole that they know a big catfish is definitely living in. They don't know which catfish is living in it, but but some big ass catfish had to come in there and punk another catfish to get this big ass hole. So mm -hmm. that, that's what they're, they're attacking. Catfish are, are attacking and they've been living in these holes. What I didn't think about is I'm gonna be bent over in this lake like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna be bent over in this lake like this. Yeah. I don't know what the back, third degree burns on my back. Jeez. Cause it was just sitting on top of the lake for like a hour, hour and a half, two hours. It was almost getting like magnified. I had bubbles on my back the oh, next two days. Uh -huh. And on top of that, the glove only goes to this point. This fucking catfish that they took me to was literally 30 some pounds. It was huge. I, you have to go in, you have to fist the fish. Yeah, this is what we're doing. And I should find the photo of me and my catfish, by the yeah. way. It's bigger than that one. Yeah. You, have to, you have to fist the fish. You go right in the mouth. It's going to attack you, by the way, because they think you're coming. To, you're a catfish trying to come and steal that hole that they have lived in or whatever. So there's like a vacuum almost because the, the mouth is so large. It's catfish. You get sucked in to the hand or to the mouth. You fist the fish. You go down the side. Then you get the uh, gills or whatever. Then you bring in the other hand. You lock it. And then you pull that. You're fighting a dinosaur out of its house. Okay. <laughs> so then it's you versus fish in water. And you pull it out. And I got that thing and I was pumped. It was huge, you know. At that time, it was a big TV show. I had this big ass catfish. And then as I was handing it over, you know, for them to get rid of and through the whole fight, I looked down, I realized my entire arm was just, just sandpapered. Just the entire arm was sandpaper. So the glove didn't do a fucking thing. Nope. And they knew that, by the way, whenever they got the glove. My hand was like actually the best because it was outside the fish the entire time. My whole arm was just getting just brutally rubbed by the, the sandpaper of the catfish. But it was a moment. Ended up with burns. Had to go to the hospital. Got my arm all, all fucked up. But I fisted a fish. I went noodling. Me and Schlegs. Hell dude. yeah. Me and Schlegs. Yeah, I, I remember when the show was big. You gotta, you have to hope that there's not a snapping turtle down there, right? Couldn't they also be living there? Well, I think Gator too, or something like that. Jeez. I think it was maybe, which I did not know. I did not know. Snapping turtle, gator, like in the hole Jeez. or just cruising around? Just cruising around. I, I did not. I, I, and I still don't know if they were fucking with me or not. I was just so pumped to be out of there, and I couldn't put a shirt on because my back was so hot. So I didn't really follow up with any thoughts. But yeah, it was awesome though. I mean, it was fucking cool. Do you wear, um, do you wear those fingerless gloves when you work out? All right. Those are cool. Listen, I want to let you fitness people know that when I want You don't want to get calluses. I do. I li I've always yeah. had them. I like calluses. I've yeah. always had them. Okay. All right. Literal Pat. Continue. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying is, listen, just because I didn't want a catfish to bite me and I never fisted a catfish. I get it. I'm not, I'm not, blame me. I'm not tough enough to, I don't want to get stung by the barbs either. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to go noodle. Well, you're doing this thing anyways. You're not getting any calluses yeah, over there. You're, you're doing cords and bands. That's cardio. 
You're doing bands over there. You're not doing any callous stuff. What are you even talking? What are, are you clanging you know, and banging? You know what I'm doing. You know exactly what I'm doing, don't you? Are you clanging and banging over there? You're cleaning? What do you mean? You're deadlifting? You're cleaning? You're, no. You're, no, but you get calluses doing everything. I, I mean, you've had them since you're a young kid. You've had calluses, I would assume. Yeah, me too. But I'm saying like now, yeah, you said... Uh, Still holding, just still using bars and dumbbells and all that. Oh, you got the chalk okay. in the house? Hey. Oh, I chalk up like five times a day just for random things. <laughs> Playing knockout with the kids, everything. I chalk up. <laughs> I don't do that, but I yeah, put it on my hand. Oh, only King does that. The um, <laughs> do you have chalk in your weight room though every morning? Yeah, I have the the old silver platter that they have like at the Olympics. Oh, dude. Jeez, AJ. Oh, you, you're, hey, you're fucking. It's going, a problem huh? though because kids come down and we have like an unfinished playroom and they see if they see the chalk like our kids' friends and then all of a sudden chalks everywhere. <laughs> yeah, and then you know friends' parents come in. They think you're running some coke operation yeah. out there. They get chalk. It's chalk. Yeah. What type of savage has chalk at their home gym? <laughs> you are moving weight over. Are you? You're chalking no, every not. morning. I just I chalk it up for anything though. Like it, yeah. <laughs> oh, so you're like baloney bopping, and you're just grabbing <laughs> I some need chalk. Golf. I got. I need some chalk when I golf. That's what I need because that's when I start sweating and everything. I don't like wearing a glove either. I don't think I've ever seen a home gym that has a full chalk operation going on. And maybe I haven't. And by the way, this is this is exactly what I'm saying. This is what we need out of people like you, though. Mm -hmm. You know, whenever you earlier you said, hey, we could have made those curls better whenever you turn that on top, as opposed to saying, those aren't real curls. Those aren't what I do. No, are, hammer curls are very good. They, they just work a little different part of your arm. What do I thought I was doing this one here. This is where I feel yeah, it. like the long part of your bicep. You want to get that peak, though. The peak is what everyone cares about. No, I like the line that's in between the thing. Mm -hmm. That's all part of it. Yeah, so you should do hammer curls with your normal bicep curls. Maybe some concentration curls Ooh. where your, your arm's Ooh. resting against your leg. Eesh. Or that thing. Yeah, you know the deal where you put on the uh, – the we had that growing up. But the metal thing that holds your arms and you do, like, nice restricted biceps. Oh, the thing around here. Yeah. No, no, I'm just talking about with the bar. The sevens. Is that what I'm doing? Looks good, yeah. With a straight, if you do that with a straight bar, does that doesn't that kill your like my wrist turning like that? It's brutal. I I've never done it. I'm just asking chalk. what I should do. Is what I'm saying because I'm gonna get chalk and I'm gonna try to fucking just bought two pounds for the office. Thank you. We need the thing. Well, don't you do pull up? Like I I have a pull up bar. I, I love doing pull ups throughout the day. I always chalk up before that. No, I, <laughs> do you really just you pump out some pull ups through the well, day? It's hanging. That's it's like anything. That's why it's good to have it available. Have it there. I have a nice like pull up bar hanging out of the ceiling in the basement. And I'm in and out of the basement a decent amount. Yeah. <laughs> Pop in, get a few 10 or 12, and pop on back upstairs. I had a roommate, so I had a roommate. Pull-ups are like the squats for your upper body. Squats for your lower body are very, very important. I think pull-ups are like that for your upper body. By the way, when I was doing pull-ups, I did it for one season. I felt like it was my mo it, one season. I was, I'm not a pull-up guy. It killed me in the presidential fitness. I got through it enough that I should have met the cuck. Uh, the cuck. Jesus. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. The goddamn president. Yeah, I might have been. I don't, know, I don't know at the time. But I couldn't touch my toes in there. I've never been built for the pull-up with how, you know, my lower body being 80% of my weight for a long time. So that yeah. is a death sentence for me. What, there was one season, though, Griff Whalen made me get into it. It is awesome. It, it's the whole thing. I had a teammate, roommate one time. Every time he got up, he did 10 push-ups, and then he would go about his life. And he was obviously stacked by that. Every time you walk by that thing, you hit 10 pull-ups. How many pull-ups are you doing a day? 50, 100? No, not every time. I wish I did more. I need to get one upstairs somewhere where I'm at the majority of the day. If Shut I had a pull-up bar hanging like somewhere in the middle of the house, then I would definitely be doing hey, Axel, at shut least the 50 fuck a day. Up, right? Ten. <laughs> you want up? You're next, yeah. Axel. Oh, they do. Yeah, that's the problem. They all want up. They want me to put them up there, and then they hang, and yeah. Help! Yep. Get stuck. <laughs> it's right. up there pretty high. All right. Well, I appreciate every fitness tip you give me. All right, and I'm gonna go. I don't have any this. tips. I don't have any advice or tips. No, you had. You just you gave did, them. dude. Hey, I can tell you. Hey, no. pull-ups are the I'll squat you for I, your I, upper I, body. You need them. Hey, hashtag fit life. Hell hashtag yeah. fit fam. Hell yeah. Hashtag squats for your upper body. Let's go, dude. Good. Good for you. I don't have any advice. I'm just telling you things that I have enjoyed over the years. Hawks. Oh, okay, so this is like whenever people follow me on public. Yeah. Like, hey, this is just what I'm doing. Oh. This is not necessarily advice. This is just what I'm doing. That's what you're saying about fitness game? 
Yes, because I do not care what your workout is, what you do. Just enjoy yourself and do whatever you want, and you don't have to tell me. Until you start judging the form on the people. I don't judge it. Yeah, you yeah, just did, dude. You that's how money you we started. got here. You're, you're you misleading the public. You're misleading people. I don't want you to get in trouble. Read you're that a question. Big show. You have a big platform. Read that question. How many curls did Pat do? And then he starts slopping around hammer curls. Well, those, those, were, those were joke are joke DeChambeau those are, curls. Those are yeah. DeChambeau curls. And those I mean, I couldn't tell much difference between those and the real ones. Yes. You oh, shut my up, dude. God. Dude. But You're you know, But, Pat, you know, those hammer curls are – you could do way more hammer curls than you can – normal bicep curls where you're twisting your wrist. To be honest, I've never done a bicep cur uh, curl. I've only do the hammer rows, probably because it's a much higher success rate and you can do more. <laughs> I'd assume that is why I do it. I, I, I've never but, but, done hey, No, that. but you know what you do? Usually when you grab the, uh, when you have your band that you go wake the boys up, when you try to get your biceps going before you go on wrestling, you do real curls. No, I, that's just flat bar curl basically with the band in between. Yeah, I know. But I'm saying you you could do hammer curls on the, on the, uh, with the band as well, but you don't. Oh, it's hard because then it starts digging on your uh, hand because yeah. it's so tight and you got to either, you know what I mean? It's... Build up with some calluses, man. I got calluses. Okay, don't be that disrespectful, please. All right, I know you're just playing your little game. I love people that have no idea, like, don't. <laughs> Like that, it would be very, it would be a very disrespectful thing to be like. You don't even have calluses, man. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. legit. <laughs> that, that thing. Yeah, that would be that is. Yeah, it's off of the math. It is actually. Yeah. yeah. So you need. Hey, hey, I, hey, we play a lot of games on this show. All right. Mm -hmm. You need. You need to stop with that one. You're too busy counting money. Well, I do got calluses, but I don't count it anymore. I uh, weigh it. Okay, yeah. and uh, at this point, I can eyeball. Uh, the, no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> These are all rap lyrics. I would love to count my. There's no more real money. That's why that fifty thousand dollar backpack thing to you guys was so. That might be the last time. It is. It is hard to get money at this point. It's all just on a screen. Everything's just on a screen now. It's hard. The whole, Jim Irsay told us. Yeah. Hey, they tell me it's there. Can I buy the plane? Sure. They tell me 80, it's there. 80 million. All right. <laughs> I just saw it pop <laughs> yeah. over. I saw it pop over. I think that's for everybody, though. I think that's just how life is now. Do you think he has to confirm that wire with a phone call or just a simple email or through his app? Like, hey, confirm 80 million wire to... Whoever. I think he gets a text notification, you know, yeah. a six digit code <laughs> gets sent to his cell phone that he has to then punch in as if he has to log into his ESPN plus or something. Yeah. Please verify. Uh, please verify this is you. <laughs> um, he, <laughs> he, uh, yeah, he got caught in a situation on Twitter. Uh, yeah. To recently. Yeah. It might've been a fake screenshot. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. It just seemed like, uh, so he liked the tweet that I don't think he knew exactly what that meant or what it could have said. And it was a tweet that said something that wasn't necessarily great. And then moments later, it was unliked or whatever. And it was like, I don't know if he accidentally, while scrolling, hit it, which could happen, can happen, especially for Jim Irsay, who just had an incredible photo shoot, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Incredible Woo. photo Looked shoot. good. Can we, pop, can we pop it up, Z? Yeah. yeah, I think it's from the Colts Instagram. They posted it up there. No, no, the tweet he liked. Well, it's, I don't want to die. I don't know, but that's a very real thing to where you accidentally like something and you don't even know it. And then you could go back and see, oh, wait, what? Yeah, but I've think, never I've never liked anything like on my own. I've accidentally liked things before and I have to realize, oh, I got to go and, take and, that off. And to the platforms is credit. I think there has been some updates on the multiple platforms where they realize, like, oh, we put that right in a spot where people are potentially, and I think that, that happened to a lot of people. Twitter, you can still see how it could happen, mm -hmm. though, potentially while scrolling, thumb, finger, whatever it is Jim Irsay is doing. Uh, but it, he, somebody, either he or somebody had to unlike something very quickly, though. But these posts, <laughs> his photo shoot, ah, ah, get out of my face, huh? That's oh, hell yeah. What is this for? I think it was just a yearly photo shoot or something like that. Fun. I think it was uh, maybe. I mean, this is what you should do. If you own an NFL football team, this is what you should be doing. Bingo. I agree 1,000%. Go back to the next one. Like, it's I'm calling fun. that play maybe. Yeah. Hey, that might be the first play of the season. Okay, boys? Sorry, we're going to try to win, but that might be the first play of the season if I'm on a team. And if I own a team and we finally win a Lombardi too, by the way, I'm taking this photo every day of the yes. week. Good morning. Keep going. It'll happen. And when it does, you can take pictures like this. Like, I, I love it. I, Jim Marseille is such a cool dude. I think nobody knew that for a long time. Uh, and I'm, I'm very happy about it. I'm very happy about it. Are he and Vince McMahon friends? Huh. 
they I would assume that they would get along. All right, so fascinating that you brought that up. I got real high, obviously, mm-hmm. one time. Not no, in Indiana because it's not legal here. One time, AJ, one time. And uh, I started thinking about, you know, my interactions with Vince McMahon. And the thing, you know, because he... He does say things. Him and Zito are the two people that say things into my ear. And there's uh, quite a range there. And also KD and and some other people pop in there or whatever. But when Vince, you know, drops in to say something, this is this has been talked about by a lot of commentators in the history of sports entertainment and wrestling. It's like, hey, that can upset some people. I love it. Like I enjoy it. And even there's been some times where there has been like some, I don't want to say some passion to what he's saying or whatever. Like, I love it. I think it's a very cool opportunity that I, I, the way, maybe it's just how I have framed these types of situations in my mind versus what other people think. Like getting to listen to Vince on Vince's show, you know, that he created on his network and his thoughts of what should be either happening or saying or something like that. Like, I find that awesome. And he's not... I, I don't know. Maybe it'll change, but I have enjoyed it. I got at the pay-per-view, you know, you go, you're on and then you're off. And then you're on when you're a commentator, then you're off. So when SmackDown matches are happening, me and Michael Cole are on. Then when Raw matches are happening, Jimmy, Byron, and Corey are on. So we're off. And I was sitting there and I was thinking about it afterwards, you know, like, I wonder if he enjoys, you know, talking to everybody else, you know, because I feel like we have a pretty good little give and take. And <laughs> yeah. then I, I started thinking to myself, I'm like, does Vince McMahon have any friends? Like, who who would be Vince McMahon? It would have to be some other billionaire. But Vince McMahon is still working like every single week, every single night. I wonder when you get up to that level, who and how that whole thing works. You know, the friends thing. Who can be in a well, circle? Anyone that's his age is not working like he is, obviously. So who, yeah, who would be like some close friends that he would hang out with? I don't know. I mean, especially when at that level, I, I don't know. Do you have a talk back? Can you speak back to him that doesn't go on air? Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Okay. I don't ever, I've never done it. But during the break, you know, everybody can hear us as soon as we put those headphones on. Everybody can hear us that has a headphone on, you know? So before every show, I'll be like, hey, hey, let's have the fucking greatest SmackDown of all time. <laughs> here we go. Hey, here we go. You know, I'm like, Cole, let's go. And then, like, uh, you know, I'll wait until. Boss man says something, then next commercial break, I'll go, hey man, hope you're doing well back there, by the way. Good to see you, good to hear you, or whatever, you know. And Michael Cole goes, you are such a fucking kiss ass. I'm like, I just want to say hello to the guy. I just want to say, hey, I just want, I don't know how many people are doing that. And that's kind of led to the whole, what if, now, people in the wrestling business know this, but live your gimmick is a big deal. And Young Rock, I think, went into that. The, mm-hmm. the greatest sports entertainers of all time were on the screen, off the screen, same person, right? Like that is, live your gimmick. Uh, The Rock said that his dad, Rocky Johnson, who started his wrestling career in Hawaii from, if the young Rock is accurate, there might've been other places, but he got in WWE, did did business with Vince McMahon. and, And whenever he said that to Rock and Rock chose to put that in there, I thought that was a nice piece of information for like how the business works. And this has never been talked about to me by anybody. This is just my observations. Vince McMahon has lived his gimmick every single day for 70 some years now at this point. There's no way anybody's going to see him any differently until the day he dies. Nope. There is no he is going to be Vince McMahon until because all these shows and all these meetings he's in and everything like that, he's a bazillionaire. He has completely changed the game and he's like, "No, nah, that, that ain't how it goes." It's almost like a football coach who if, if I retire or something like that, I have to work. It, he is by all accounts, you know, still, Vince, I've enjoyed it a lot because I think, like, I've followed along for so long. But I think is this is, it's almost like the guy has been, I mean, he's the greatest sports entertainer of all time, I think people would have to say at this point. He's, his character was Vince McMahon, and he was just, what, himself? It's yeah, unbelievable sure at this point. And Michael Cole, you know, because he's 24 years into this, he's so fucking good. And he still gets coached up. Like, Vince still coaches him up. And Michael Cole still, you know, he still has a pregame routine. Like, there's still, like, things. He's a lot of passion and studying and everything like that. And I'm like, this is Bill Belichick and Tom Brady right now. Yeah. This is, that's what that is with uh, Michael Cole, Vince McMahon. And uh, neither is ever going to not be 
The, it's awesome. Like it is, I am, I feel like I'm a part of a fucking documentary every time I do WWE stuff. It's like, I'm in the document, I'm in the video game right now. This is so cool. And I hope I keep that forever, obviously. Well, of course, but I'm, I'm curious how this ties back to the story when I mentioned Jim Ursay and Vince being friends. Who's Vince's friend? Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's what you, oh, you say one night you sat there by yourself and you started thinking who was Vince friends with? That's what, okay, when I mentioned Ursay. Yeah, like yeah. Who, you should ask him next time for real. Just I think guys like Vince that aren't used to having anyone come at him or do things like act like you. If you, I think they really get a kick out of it sometimes. By the way, with Jim Mercy, I think I'm the only human that ever talked to him as if he was a human sometimes, yeah. and I think they that's got, why they we have had, to love that. I think that's why we had a relationship. He walked in the locker room one time, and he had this purple bottle of water, and it was every time he came in, he had this bottle of water, you know. And every time he walked in, I go, "Hey, fucking good suit today, boss. You like that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, like nobody. Everybody's like, Mister Ursy, Mister Ursy, how you doing? I'm like, oh, that fucking suit, crushing it today, or whatever. You, you like that? And then he had that water every single game in his chair. They had a chair in the locker room for him pregame, and it just so happened to be literally right next to where my seat was with the way the away thing. And I'm like, what's with that water? Yeah, oh, I don't know. They wanted me to fucking buy the company. I don't want to. I don't want to sell water. I just want to drink it. It's, <laughs> it's really good. He's, and then he just moves along, you know? It's like, how many people in Ursay's life is saying, like, that type of thing to him? Probably nobody. I assume it's very difficult to have people in your life or even have conversations when you get to that point. Because people are either, what, scared to death, dependent upon, or they've heard stories about you that they just have no idea. You know what I mean? It's just uh, interesting. Well, for them, you're probably always assuming, oh, well, this guy's trying to take advantage of something that, you know, he can get out of me versus actually just being like a fucking yeah. human to me. That's, you know? hey, more money, more problems, they say. Yeah, a lot exactly. of freedom. But who is Vince McMahon hanging out with, you think, if he's not? Or is he just working all the time? Taker. Well, to your point, like, when you get that old, you think you play golf every day, you got golf buddies. But Vince McMahon, the character, probably Vince does not McMahon, play the human golf. Yeah, no, he is, I don't think Vince McMahon is stepping onto a tee ball. Yeah, no <laughs> yes. What is this? He may have some buddies that I'm he grew up playing. with, you know, high school or college buddies they're still friends with. But what are they doing? He's like, hey, I'll fly you out to watch Raw this week. Like, he's always working. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Whatever the case. So it makes him different. Hell of a run. Congratulations, yeah. man. Still going. Still Thank in his prime. Because like, even Cole, you'd think someone who he'd been working with for 24 years at some point, like, hey, that relationship might turn into a friendship. But it seems like by all means. No, I just, think they are, by the way. I think there is like a. Like respect, like a I friend there respect. Is, but I wonder if that's all the relate. Like if I, I wonder if that is. As far as it goes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like with, with every all bus, you know? Because Vince does what? He's in the movie business. Yeah, he does. So he probably meets a lot of people over in Hollywood. He's in the TV business. He's in the content business. Yeah. He's in the, he's in every business. So I don't know, you know. Don't Seems know. exhausting. And his wife wasn't she? In, she's been into politics. I know in and out of like they are all. Hey, they Vince all McMahon's are motor. Going. Hey, Vince McMahon's motor. If you could somehow bottle that, yeah. his drive. That is something you're looking for. Well, when was happen. he on the? He was on the cover of Muscle and Fitness or something. Just jacked. Back in the day. There was a couple weeks ago, somebody released, he was deadlifting like 400, oh, yeah. 500 yeah. pounds. It's awesome. He'll say things because, you know, the, and I talked about this with the IWC, the internet wrestling community, where a lot of people try to go and learn about the wrestling world. Maybe since I'm getting in it, there's been some people, obviously not as, as many as like, you know, others would get, but there's been some people that have been interested maybe in wrestling again and haven't been for a long time and gone over there and they, they, I think they look to the internet wrestling community as like information. Like if somebody's going to get in football, I would hope there's a chance that somebody were like, all right, well, let's go check out this group of idiots to see football that kind of happens, you know, on the internet. And the internet wrestling community is so negative because a lot of things have happened in a long, 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 long run of not only, you know, wrestling, sports entertainment, WWE, there has been a lot, but it's like the way he was portrayed and then the, the dude that I get to hear some, I'm like, Pfft. These people think he's lost his fast. He has not. <laughs> no, he's still going. I, I, I want to let everybody know he has not at all. He'll say some things in my ear. I'm like, brilliant. Yep, you're Vince McMahon. That's why. <laughs> that's why you're Vince McMahon right there, of course. And I think I have a pretty good brain. And he'll say, he'll like ask me a question or whatever. And I'm like, I don't know. Actually, he's like, exactly, basically. And then he'll just drop out. I'm like, oh, fucking A. All right, cool. It's like, a, it's a cool thing. It coaches everybody. Well, yeah. I mean, he. He basically invented all of that. What you're doing now, 
the wrestling people, the diehard, the indie wrestling people would say that the territory days when Vince's dad only had the Northeast and everything, wrestling has been around a long, long time, okay? Yeah. Wrestling has been uh, a great, great source of entertainment for a long, long time. But what he has done and what we are... I think keep it alive brought a lot of uh, a lot of eyes to it and something that could have fizzled out, changed the game completely, and obviously made it a worldwide sensation. Although it, there was wrestling in a lot of places, I think there is no doubt that old Vince McMahon is the guy of the business. But goddamn, yeah, I'm not saying he invented professional wrestling. Yeah, he he basically invented what we're watching now, like what we see the spectacle of, of professional wrestling, how over the top it is, it's mainstream. Like, yeah, he did all that. Yeah, WrestleMania, 100,000 people sitting yeah. in a stadium. You know, I don't Leveled know. it up. Yeah. So they kind of advanced it because everything of it would have been left in the dust. And when the toothpaste got put out of the tooth. There it is. Paste tube. Mm -hmm. The ability to still create content, like that is something. You know, it's, it's, it's a, when it's done right, it's, it's action. It's battle, obviously. It's comedy. It's yeah. drama. It's like everything when it's done right. It is the, it is the best form of entertainment. It in touches my all eyes. bases. I'm very dumb. Very dumb. People know that. I am a very dumb human. But when it's doing it, it is the best form of entertainment in my eyes. Now, NFL is obviously, that is, I'm going to watch NFL. Aside right. from I, conversation. Aside from yeah. the NFL. Yeah. yeah. I just think when wrestling is done right, it is fucking unbelievable. Yeah, like when you see those old clips, and obviously, you know, you hope as stadiums come back to, you know, full, they get back to that. But, like, you see the old clips of The Rock or, you know, Kurt Angle, like, addressing the crowd and the interaction. The interaction, the boo and the you yeah. suck, the storyline, the heartbreak, the, the triumph, everything. It's just like, and it's live. You know, yeah, and even the skits they would do, right? Like, yeah, even, it's like live. Just, everything's yeah. live. Mm -hmm. Steve Austin, whenever he had to do the cement dump into the Corvette, the fucking what did he say? He, he said, We only we rehearsed that, but one time they told me I'd turn it on, <laughs> and he said, Of course it worked because it's live fucking TV. <laughs> yes, and that's a real thought over there. It's like, Hey, you're live, so whatever it is, it has to it work. Worked. Yeah. It works, <laughs> yeah. it's uh, it's awesome. I'm lucky to be over there, all right. But I hope Jim and Vince are friends, that'd be cool, and then. You know, maybe one day we'll be a part of that. Hell yeah. That friendship, AJ. You, me, the boys. That'd be nice. Let's go have dinner with them. That food's going to be all I bet you. Vince McMahon and Jim, by the way. He's big lifter back in the day, too. He was a power lifter. Yeah. He was doing the same thing. I bet you they're, what, grilled chicken and rice. Uh-huh. Yeah. Grilled chicken and nah, rice. I bet a Vince little broccoli. Seven steaks for dinner. <laughs> oh, Vince, you think? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> Full carnivore diet, nothing else but steak. I bet it is just one clank knife off the plate after another with Vince McMahon or eating. He gets a giant, he gets like the extra special double XL tomahawk and he just holds yeah. it, just gnaws on it all night. <laughs> that would make sense, by the way. That would make that would live the gimmick, but that would if that just, steak is as red as it possibly can be. And yep. it is, by the way, the most delicious steak oh, yeah. in the history Flesh. of steaks. Yep. Every time on the plane, need two of them when I get on. <laughs> I saw, I saw somebody that ran a water one time when they were on like a super schedule. They had somebody that like brought them a drink that maybe had a certain supplement in it or or something to get them through. Not Vince or in the wrestling business, some other word. I'm like, so that's how they. When you get to that level, you just have somebody run you. Uh, yeah. Hey, you need some electrolytes in your system, vitamin B, vitamin C. Go ahead and drink this water that is ice cold all the time, it looks like. It's just, then a meal got brought, like a quick snack got brought in the middle of the thing. I'm like, oh, that's how you do it. And they probably have like the, oh, okay, it's 3.30. I need to go bring, you know, X person there, you know, B vitamins or whatever the hell it is. For and them. the conversations that all have to happen, by the way. For all these to people. get to that point, no, just the decisions that are made by these people, and you're trying to float oh. in and out of these conversations. Hello, how you doing? Okay, need to figure out, I don't know, maybe a ten million dollar decision in the next minute <laughs> and a half, right here. Okay, then we also need to do this. It's crazy life up there at that top. Yeah, it is. Are you uh, are you worried that you're going to become completely like unrelatable and just not be able to even like recognize other humans? Yeah. Now you already We're, said if you get that way, you said someone smacked me in the mouth, and then I'll bring bring myself back down to earth. I like I think I'm always gonna enjoy the taste of a quarter pounder with cheese. <laughs> you know, like yeah. I think I'll always 
It's like people that try to virtue signal and go, oh, Taco Bell is gross, the terrible meat. Like, no, it's great. It tastes great. That's, but I think that's how, I think people that do evolve or change with the potential material items that they can now purchase or afford it to them, they change like everything about them to fit what they think or what they always dreamt they would be. Whether it's going to these black tie affairs in which you have to microdose yourself through an allergy, yep. wearing a black tie cocktail event, and acting as if that new genre of food that is terrible, unfulfilling, <laughs> terrible tasting at those events, but that's just what you do now because you're above people. I don't know if I'll ever get to that point. Now, there will be some things that will change, hopefully, if I get to a billion dollars in my life, for instance. That guy droning through um, Times Square. Yep. Okay, there's a chance I'm going to be able to do that, too. And mm -hmm. when I'm doing it, I might look down on people at the time because just sheer necessity because I'm I, I'm literally above them. Yeah, way the higher. Time. There's going to be cool toys, but I don't think I'm ever going to, you know, like this, this is possibly me at that moment. And <laughs> will people say I've changed? Maybe. Don't walk alongside you guys anymore. I hover over top, but I have the ability to do that. So I'm going to do that. I think that'll be the difference, I think, that I will change. You know what I mean, AJ? Yeah, you'll just do fun things like this. Did this guy get some kind of clearance from the city? There's no way. I would assume not uh, because there would have been more eyes on it if the city knew about it. This seems like a rebel maverick yeah. drone skater, you know? Casey Neistat? Yeah. This guy's gone rogue. He is <laughs> nice. <laughs> Who did he just Is that say? a skateboard? On, test that sucker out. Let's get some get some altitude. <laughs> I thought it was just like a mega drone and he put something on top of it. That's what you could like, stand on. It looks like it's like maybe four or five drones, right? I think we yeah. looked it up. It was like a $20,000 drone. That's yeah, one yes. drone? That's one drone, yes. So technically. So. Yeah. You it's made to carry. That's that. like one of those probably that carries missiles and kills people. Mm -hmm. ah, oh, predator, geez. predator drone. Hey, Jeez the wheeze, dude. Fuck. That's a that's a big deal that. now, man. People predator drones are helicopter size. Vegas dude. desert controlling it like a video game. Hey, those drones are helicopter size. Yeah. I have well. somebody in my family that actually is a professional. Damn. Yeah, flyer of those things. Yeah. That's wild. in the military. Yeah. It's awesome. I don't think I think surveillance is what. Ooh. Yeah. 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 For sure. Like That's what Jay, Jay, Jay just said. Surveillance is what uh, Jay just said. UAV. Okay. <laughs> That's what Jay just Scout said. Scout it out. Yeah, I, I, here. He was a great gamer, though, huh? I don't know. Probably. <laughs> Better be. I mean, shit. Hey, by the way, if we get into one of these big wars that allegedly happen or are going to happen, and I don't know, I, literally the only thing I know about that world is that everybody yells at each other all the time and nothing changes. So I try not to... But if we get into one of these things where it's not a lot of boots on the ground, although any military person you talk to, I've gotten a chance to chat with you know a, a few, especially with uh, the foundation, everything I've gotten to do here in Indiana. Got to have boots on the ground. It's like a necessity. But these drones are becoming just absolute undetectable. What we need, all right? We need doctor disrespect. Uh huh. Okay. We need uh, we need ninja to yes. get out there. I think Kyler Murray. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to need him. him. Simmons, maybe. Yes, even. all the top gamers. Yes. Okay, we need the top gamers. Nas is the NASCAR guy fall into that list? Okay. That NASCAR guy. Okay. Jesus. Okay, AJ. Hawk. No. No, I'm talking. He was about a big gamer, right? I'm Shut up, I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm talking about. The He's talking about Kyle Larson Whatever. from when he was, you know, on Twitch doing the Irish. There's no way that's what you were talking about. There's uh, no way that's what that, you were talking about. Yeah. No, I know there's na there's many NASCAR guys that are huge yeah. games. See, now he's pivoting. <laughs> yeah, that's what he was Bro, talking about. I, what is your fucking deal, dude? No, because I'm trying to save our country and say, hey, if you have a so draft, if we need to have a draft, let's make sure we are specific with the draft and let's pay, by the way. Yes. Let's get. Let's get the guy. Odell Beckham Jr., what's he doing? He's sniping people jumping out of helicopters. Yeah. Let's get him on the stick. Set it up in his house. Put him in a bunker. Do whatever. I think we have the capacity to potentially keep up, right, when it comes to 100%. drone control. These guys are wild cards. Though. Wild cards though. They don't take orders. They'll just go out and they'll bomb whatever they want. Yeah, but we'll tell them, like, hey, battle royale victory is if this happens. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, there's a way to motivate them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Simple. Billy. Billy Tubes, right? He watches. He'll know who we should be recruiting. He should maybe be the director of recruiting. Yeah. <laughs> he knows everybody the that sticks out there. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, that was unbelievable. Favorite, what if we ever did. get into a uh, back-and-forth opening Pokemon cards, we know Billy is <laughs> top of the list. <laughs>
All right. All right. Isn't that what he does? Let's yeah. get out of here. <laughs> Billy, I appreciate you, man. It's a revenue stream you're creating. You're setting up your family for the future. All right. Let's get out of here. We appreciate everybody. I want to join one. <laughs> Billy, can you post that thing from earlier from AJ's feed, too, please, from his Twitter account that you've already logged into? Um, AJ, thank you so much. Uh, if you haven't answered the hashtag PMS 100K giveaway weekday three contest, Feel free to do so. I'm assuming a winner has already been crowned, but you can join in on the over 10,000 tweets that were submitted. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you, everybody. AJ, thank you for your time. David Morris earlier, congrats mm -hmm. on the success. Thank you for your time. Hammer Down Boys, thanks for coming in here. Thank in you. lieu of tie for the first hour or so. Connor, you too. Hammer Down Boys, live in 26 yep. minutes. How are we doing? What are we thinking? What's going on? Are we winning money or not still? Yeah, of course we're winning money. Uh, last night was a good night. Uh, we got Euros going on uh, this afternoon that we'll probably finish watching together. We got the baseball diamond. We got a NHL and NBA game tonight. Yeah, it's a good night. Let's go. That's at 4 o'clock. Oh. I'm going to go eat some food. And then I got my wife's first ever for the brand event that yeah. I'm incredibly proud of her Sweet. for putting together. Congrats. Are you are you attending? Yeah, I am going. Um, I'm not doing anything for this, though. I have not. This is her. This has been her and her her team's creation. I'm very excited for her. She's been busting her ass for this thing. I'm, I'm excited for this to happen. What's going on, Nick? Uh, we have some urgent breaking news. Uh, unfortunately, we are no longer trending. There is another McAfee trending, though. Uh, John McAfee oh, no. is trending. He is dead. Oh, they're like, no. 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 They got him. Where did he die? Okay, hold on. Oh, no. Hold on. John McAfee, McAfee virus, whatever it was, creator, was on every computer that ever existed when we were growing up. I think he got in with Microsoft early and everything else. He had coders and everything that were able to combat in battle any bug that would come in and ruin your computer, which was happening on at a massive scale with this introduction of computer world. There's bad people out there, bad things out there. There would be bugs that would get in and just completely destroy. The John McAfee created a team of Navy SEAL-like coders that protected every computer basically on Earth. Made hundreds of millions of dollars off of this. I only know this because my family was asked every day of our existence as teenagers, as I was a teenager every tournament, hey, you know John McAfee? And it's like, not really related not related wish we were though the guy is in every computer has made all the money in the world would be cool then obviously he steps down from the company he starts doing other things for instance starting a gang in a third world country in which he lived upon Oof. where he had actual gunmen that surrounded him at all times and he was doing a uh, covert missions on the island potentially murdering somebody that was a conversation that happened it was never convicted he escapes there comes back to America, gets into the Bitcoin game, says he's going to become president, gets run out. Of this guy has been an absolute heat magnet for conversation since the day he showed up into our world. He has fucked up on many occasions, but I think John McAfee, in his dying moments, probably said, I fucking did it and disappeared. <laughs> this guy is a maniac. How'd he die? Yeah, what yeah. a life. This guy was babyface of all babyface for a long time turned heel completely took that thing all he lived his gimmick all the way into a third world country creating a gang now he is allegedly dead just one or two years after saying bitcoin would get to a hundred thousand or he would cut his dick off or something like that <laughs> now we're living uh in a world without john mack he was found dead in his prison cell uh in spain after they the spanish courts decided that they were going to extradite him back to the u.s and he was on the run for whatever it could have been Spanish racketeering Spanish. murder corruption Dang. fraud whatever he went on a run there right what do he do we might have another situation i mean spanish media is reporting oh, that it was no. suicide so oh no oh wow so we might have another yeah, uh we might don't the emails yeah, i won't I'm... oh come on damn did he leave a note Probably an email, AJ. Were the guards working <laughs> properly? Oh, they were on the clock for sure. Well, they're also on the clock, right, for another thing, and it's uh -huh. come out that they weren't actually there. And, and we were all told this stuff. I'm sure they were also falling, right? too. What's that, AJ? 
So what about the cameras? I'm sure they were watching. Well, actually, that just like the last time, there was a glitch right power in the system. Power outage, maybe, in Spain. Weird. Lots of power outages in Spain lately. Something happened. Yeah. And we're not supposed to ask, by the way. I think it's only right uh, you give them a proper moment of silence. Sure. We will give a moment of silence to John McAfee before he became, you know, the villainous character. He, Is he dead though? Do we know if he's dead? Is this a fake thing? Yeah, hold no, the phone. Con confirmed dead. By who? Confirmed it, yeah. Uh, the Spanish media, and I believe the U.S. Oh, Isn't that awesome though? That John McAfee's life was so fucking weird and wild, and and Department you know, just of Justice, everything. Also confirmed. That my first thought is he's not dead. No way. He, <laughs> yeah. he just paid somebody to say he was dead. This guy's not dead. There's no way. His is some con, some angle, some scheme, some strategy. But maybe a hey, hell of a run, dude. You fucked up a lot of shit, of course, but hell of a run. That boy, John. You know, the McAfee family. Oh, John, I was never related to you. I never saw a dollar. And I would like to think at least if we we're at Thanksgiving or Christmas together, somebody would have said, hey, stop fucking up. <laughs> I, I, I think somebody would have at some point. But on his dying day, he and I. That would have turned him for sure. Probably. I think so. Cut it out, oh, John. Oh, you're right. I never thought about that. Grow up. Yeah. Hey, John John got up into that upper echelon where, you know, just like all these other super successful people, you have nobody that tells you anything, right. and you just kind of spiral potentially. And be a jag off, John. Hey, John, you're being a real fucking jag off, huh? I'm calm down. Cool down out here, right? What are you doing? You got a gang and where? That documentary is insane on it's him, great. though. Yeah, he was paying a scientist to create some pill or something. He's getting pooped on. Uh, was he? I didn't know hey, that. once again, here Chase we go. This is uh, AJ's gonna be like, ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't no <laughs> hey, if God likes getting uh, Cleveland Steamer, do what you gotta do, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not judging him for it. I didn't, I didn't hear that about that. <laughs> and like I watched the documentary. More. I don't recall any scene where he's getting dumped on. Either. No, this is Gumpy finding this on the internet. No, the documentary no, no. did not this. cover. Part, I was part of the documentary. There was no Cleveland Steamer conversation. I don't he think was it. laying underneath a hammock. Oh, yeah, there was. He did like to get pooped on. Yep. Two women. He is a pooper. By the way, the hammock, if you, I would assume that's a dream thing to have in house if you're into that type of stuff. Yeah, probably. And they would dump, like push the dump through it? Well, I think that's <laughs> probably a I think it would hammock. just happen naturally. Yeah. Anyways, that's the show, dude. Thanks, AJ. <laughs> Thanks, Gumpy. Appreciate you guys taking it this way. This is not what it's about. <laughs> Big show tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Big Wednesday coming, Huge. Thursday, whatever. It's like it's a rope hammock or like cloth? Yeah, it got to be a rope it's hammock. got to be a rope. You just dump it on yourself. Rope, rope. Cloth. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But what if it was like a, <laughs> like a grater, like a, like a, like a yeah. cheese like, garlic crust? Like, yeah. like when you're finding gold in a river? It's right. naturally going to be that way. <laughs> All right. thick rope, the thick Jesus. rope hammock. Yeah, we lost be... three thousand people. Hey, <laughs> yeah. I seen it. It was at AT. It's kind of <laughs> this. Is what happens? Good lord! Good lord. You said that's the show. You ended it. Yeah. All right, see you guys. Have a good one tomorrow. By the way, we will give away another twenty-five thousand dollars and a couple huge prizes Woo! as a Woo! thank you for watching. I honestly thank you, okay? Especially with what this international toxicity party that just got started between Gumpy and AJ. Maybe we give away has, some hammocks. Has we're, a chance of happening. We're just, <laughs> just, All right, that's just the show. Remembering see you. a man. Have a good night. Bye.